Good morning, councillors. Good morning, executive. Good morning to other officers present today and good morning to members of the community joining us through the um, benefit of the digital gallery under the continuing change circumstances. It's my privilege to declare the ordinary meeting of Tuesday 19th of October 2021 open. And in doing so, um, I would again acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet, but also that form the footprint of our great region. Uh, in doing so, I pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and again congratulate them on their continued nurturing of their culture. Note that we have a full attendance uh, today of councillors um, and that we have um, apologies today from the GM Custom and Regional Prosperity, who is replaced by the acting GM, the manager of um, Health, Building and Environment. Um, welcome. And um, we have um, an emergency circumstance uh, apology from the GM People and Culture who is not able to join us today um, and we wish her well. Councillors, um, we come to uh, item four on our agenda and um, that is the subject of prayers, um, the absence of a a minister or pastor today, please bear with me and consider the words of Proverbs 2, verse 11 and 12. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Wisdom will save you from evil people, from those whose words are twisted. Let's just pause in prayer. Father, we thank you for your blessings to our region that come in so many ways. The, the blessings of rain in season, the blessings of harvest, the blessings of um, safekeeping so often. As we contemplate the affairs of the region today, we're very mindful of your governments, of your oversight, of your wisdom. We're mindful too that we have accepted an accountability to uphold, to uplift and support um, wise decision making for the good of this whole region to put aside our personal likes and dislikes, our personal desires and agendas and to focus on that which is uplifting for the greater good, for the common good of our widespread and diverse region. We thank you that you grant us the freedom to meet. We ask that you grant us the courage for um, clear thinking and wise decision making. And above all, that we will give you the continuing glory for this magnificent place. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, turn to item five, declarations of either prescribed or declarable conflicts of interest with matters before the meeting today. Are there any such declarations to advise councillors? I'll take silence as there being none. I then move um, through to, there are no announcements or mayoral minutes today. There are no deputations or petitions that I've been advised of. Come to item eight, the confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting. There is a recommendation before us councillors that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 5th of October 2021 be adopted. You've all had access to those. Um, I seek a mover. Councillor West, thank you. Are there any questions, any additional observations or comments to those minutes? Not seek a seconder. Councillor Enright, wish to speak, Councillor? No, thank you, Mayor. Anyone uh, wishing to seek leave to speak? Not we put the motion. Those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Thank you, Councillors. Um, there's no business before the meeting today arising from that. So we come to uh, part 10 of the agenda and we turn to item 10.1. And um, CEO, I'll ask you to introduce this item. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good morning, Mayor, councillors, executive employees and members of the public listening at home. The first item, 10.1, it relates to the proposed 2022 dates for Council's ordinary meetings. Uh, the report has uh, proposed a number of dates uh, for the meetings to be held in 2022. Um, probably just by way of background, following a previous review of Council's uh, framework undertaken in early 2019, it was determined that two ordinary meetings rather than one ordinary meeting and three committee meetings, rather than one ordinary meeting and three committee meetings, sorry, um, would be held uh, per month effective on 1st of July 2019. So, we, so what I'm trying to say, sorry, Mr. Mayor, is that we'd move from one ordinary meeting and three committees to two ordinary meetings from 1st of July 2019. The dates proposed in this report follow that schedule. We have taken into account um, varying the two meetings per month for January and December, obviously for Christmas and New Year periods, uh, and some other variations throughout the year to avoid conflict with public holidays and other known events. And just to note that uh, once Council does adopt the dates, they will be advertised in accordance with the legislation in uh, newspapers uh, to ensure that the public uh, understand the dates of Council's meetings quite clearly. Happy to take any questions, um, but the recommendation there has all the dates uh, listed. Thank you, CEO. Are there um, questions for clarification to this report, councillors? Right. Councillor Enright. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, question to the CEO. CEO, do we have any data that may indicate any efficiencies or otherwise gained uh, with the fortnightly meeting format compared to the previous one ordinary and three committee meetings per month? I think part of the change there, Councillor Enright, thank you for the question, was just um, to try and make uh, the system a little clearer for uh, members of the public and also council officers um, in terms of having committee reports which then were endorsed uh, at a council meeting seven days later and there was uh, always some confusion around that, it made it difficult for people to uh, follow the meeting cycle as perhaps as clearly as now. Um, I think the other uh, change is that business is dealt with more quickly, so two ordinary meetings per month um, enables us to, from an officer's perspective anyway, to have the business, the decisions of council arriving at the uh, council's table um, uh, within the timelines that are often set by other uh, parties. Um, so we have more ability to meet uh, external timelines. So I think there's certainly some efficiencies there. In terms of numbers of reports, um, when previously in a committee system, there were three committee meeting agendas, three committee meeting reports, and then there was one council meeting agenda, which also had other items included and one council uh, meeting minutes in a monthly cycle. So there was eight sets of documents there which needed to be created um, under the system we have now uh, without the committees. There's two ordinary meeting agendas and two ordinary meeting minutes. So, you know, whilst there's a lot of information contained in, in those documents, um, there's only four documents that we have to prepare which is a challenge in its own right, but um, that's a reduction of 50% on the um, structure with the previous committee system. So I think if you're asking about um, uh, is it more efficient now, I, I would think from um, the perspective of officers trying to generate reports that um, meet a, a, a set timeline, it's, it's better. Um, and in terms of production of documents, there's a less number. So yes, I think that that probably answers your query there. Thank you. Um, further questions for this report? <coughs> Councillor Swambra. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Following on from Councillor Enright, I'd like to ask the CEO if he thinks there are any disadvantages uh, in the current system as opposed to the committee system that we had previously. Um, thank you, Councillor Swambra. I can't see any disadvantages. Um, um, and, and perhaps 
Um, I, I have in recent weeks just been looking at, um, you know, some specifics around meetings, um, committees and workshops um, on uh, publicly available agendas and um, minutes going back to 2014 and that date was only selected because that information was easily available and I didn't have time to do any more than that but I I've went through um, every um, committee agenda item and council ordinary item just to tally up um, what the information there was showing showing and um, you know that in that period between January 14 and October 21 which is today's meeting uh, there were 114 ordinary meetings 192 committee meetings and 329 council and executive and council executive planning workshops um, and I, I think the thing which jumped out to me was that um, between January 2014 and June 2019 um, the on average 32 point 32% of the um, committee meeting reports and the ordinary meeting reports were discussed in closed session whereas in the last 12 months 15% of the ordinary meeting reports um, have been discussed in closed so whilst there's been a very similar number of reports presented whether it was in um, a ordinary meeting with a committee structure or whether it was just a, as an ordinary meeting the amount which is um, provided um, in an open format has reduced by 50 percent so I, I think that the the disadvantages um, I can't see but I think that the way that we're going forward now is is um, the most um, efficient for us and and obviously the data tells me that it's the most um, transparent in terms of the, the time the council um, has been in either of the uh, committee and ordinary or just in an ordinary um, setup and a lot of that's to do with the legislation that changed in October last year um, but also as a, as officers we're striving hard to make sure that our reports are provided in an open format rather than in a closed format. Thank you, um, CEO. Uh, further clarifications, councillors? If not, CEO, I'll ask you to introduce the recommendation. Thank you, Mayor. The recommendation is the council adopt the following ordinary meeting dates for January to December 2022 with meetings commencing at 9.15 a.m. And the dates are 18th of January, 2022, 8th and 22nd of February, 2022, 8th and 22nd of March, 2022, 12th and 26th of April, 2022, 10th and 24th of May, 2022, 7th and 21st of June, 2022, 15th, oh, sorry, 5th and 19th of July, 2022, 2nd and 16th of August, 2022, 6th and 20th of September 2022, 11th and 25th of October 2022, 8th and 22nd of November 2022, and 6th of December 2022. And I hope I don't need to repeat those. <laughs> Thank you, um, CEO. I seek a mover. Councillor McGuinness. Um, any further questions to this item, councillors? Any discussion? Not a seek a second though. Councillor Enright, you wish to speak, Councillor McGuinness? Anyone seeking leave to speak additionally? Um, Councillor Enright? Mayor, I will speak, thank you. Um, uh, I take the comments of the CEO about the improvements of efficiency of the organisation since moving to the two fortnightly ordinary meetings per month. Uh, I note these. Uh, dates that have been coordinated around other known events so that we do have um, a, a good spread of opportunities for these meeting dates um, but also to fit in with the uh, known other activities and I think it's proven that the Tuesday has worked 
very well for uh, our ordinary meeting, uh, as predominantly Monday is the, when a lot of the public holidays are. So, um, uh, very happy that uh, these dates be proposed for the ensuing year. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to seek to speak? Councillor Swambra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I, I don't think this is uh, a. Uh, an agenda item inviting a discussion on the efficiency or inefficiency of the meeting system. Um, I don't propose to go there today, but uh, I note the comments and I note the lead-in that that um, uh, Councillor Enright gave the CEO to open that discussion. Um, it's not not to me. It's not the appropriate time really to get into it. Sorry, except to, you except speaking, to say you're speaking for or against. The item. I'm a, you are invited additional comments. Well, no, no, this is an additional comment. You're either seeking to speak for or against. Well, I'll speak for the for the motion yeah. and continue yeah. on what I'm saying. Um, so it's not the time really to discuss the efficiency or inefficiency. Um, I understand it would be more efficient for the organisation, but to me, that's not the point. The point is what's in the public interest is the most important thing and how much information is given to the public to understand council's processes and participate in, in that process, as well as the media to participate in that process. And I would have to uh, courteously disagree with the comments about this is the best system. Uh, my, my views are well known, but this is about meeting dates and uh, I'm in favour of the meeting dates. We've taken a vote and that's a system we've got. And so I'm happy with these meeting dates that are put forward. Anyone else wishing to speak uh, additionally for or against? Not, I will speak for the motion um, in light of those last comments and certainly the earlier comments. It is important to consider the performance of our meeting schedule when we're setting the dates. And so it was appropriate to consider the reality that what has happened when you've heard from CEO's observation, the reality is there is greater transparency, <clears throat> there is greater clarity. That feedback has come from our own observations as well as from members of the public, that they understand that all decision making of the council is done through ordinary meetings and not the confusion of what a committee can and can't do. And reports that used to come from committees <clears throat> that camouflaged, quite frankly, a lot of what had been considered and was dealt with as a single consolidated resolution um, at what were very brief ordinaries um, didn't necessarily allow the proper and complete participation. So it is good to have these dates set early so that those who wish to engage directly have that opportunity. It's also great that people have the clarity that there is a, there are two agendas a month that are consolidated agendas that address all of the decision um, matters of council so they know there's a very clear format they're not looking for multiple um, agendas so this uh, I commend these dates as a platform for us to get on with um, accelerating the business of council for the good of our wider community councillor McInnes you wish to close no, thank you. Okay. put the motion those in favour that's carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. We move to item 10.2, um, CEO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just noting that um, audit and risk matters previously have uh, sat um, with council sustainability in terms of reporting to council and the community. And because there is a, a line of sight between audit and risk and the office of the CEO, um, from now on these items will be provided under the CEO's uh, banner. Uh, this uh, first item 10.2 relates to the audit and risk committee's annual report. This is the first of this that um, the um, audit and risk committee have prepared uh, for council. Um, has approved, been approved by the ARC chair and is now presented to council. Uh, the purpose of the report is to really to reaffirm to council the purpose, role and objectives of the Audit and Risk Committee, outline the outcomes achieved and provide council with information on future activities of the Audit and Risk Committee. Um, the Audit and Risk Committee obviously has covered a very wide range of topics throughout the year. Um, 
and ensure that um, the committee itself has met the objectives within its terms of reference, um, also its legislative requirements and, and that it provides value to the organisation. Um, it's intended from now on that there will be a report provided each year. Um, I do have uh, with me the General Manager, Council Sustainability, and also the author of this report, Council's Principal Specialist, Internal Order and Improvement, Scott Williams, if there's any specific questions of Council in terms of the report that's been provided. Thank you, CEO. Um, councillors, do we have any questions for clarification to the Audit and Risk Committee annual report? If not, um, then I ask you to introduce the recommendation, CEO. And just before you do, Councillor Swanbury, can you just switch your microphone, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Councillors. The recommendation is that Council note the Audit and Risk Committee Annual Report 2020 to 2021. Seek a mover, Councillor Enright. Any further questions, Councillors? Any uh, discussion pertaining to this item? If not, seek a seconder, Councillor McConnell. Um, you wish to speak, Councillor Enright? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have um, found the process of the Audit and Risk Committee uh, in my recent uh, appointment to that role uh, very uh, thorough, well-structured, uh, open and well-chaired by Chairman uh, Stephen Coates, uh, who has allowed the discussion uh, and time to evaluate responses. I found it very beneficial. Uh, I will note that the uh, annual meeting planner uh, is a very purposeful document. Uh, it gives an indication of the timing of the items that are to be discussed in the ensuing 12 months. Uh, I have uh, appreciated the individual expertise and uh, perspectives of our uh, ARC members and the combined skill of that team. So, uh, um, so I certainly would commend this recommendation uh, and this report uh, to the Chamber. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone uh, seeking leave to speak additionally? Councillor West. Thank you, Mayor. Look, I just want to mention that um, with the inception of Sencrum Regional Council, there in fact was an audit and risk committee put in place then, which was before the legisl legislative requirements um, advised to do so. So I think this is this is certainly very great. It's very good now to have an annual report. It's another aspect of council's transparency to the community, um, and certainly open for the community to see, which is very positive. Thank you. Anyone else seeking leave to speak? If not. Councillor, you wish to close? Just one closing comment, Mayor, is that um, I believe that the Audit and Risk Committee is only as good as the people around the table and the resources that are provided to enable an effective assessment to be carried out. Um, and I believe we are in a, in a good place. Thank you. Um, Councillors, we have a recommendation or a motion before us now. Um, those in favour? Those against? Um, sorry, Councillor, was that for or against? Thank you. Um, that's unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. Um, that's carried. We move to item 10.3 on uh, page 18 of our agendas for those following along. Um, CEO. Thank you, Mayor and Councillors. Uh, 10.3 is in relation to the Audit and Risk Committee meetings. The Audit and Risk Committee meets regularly throughout the year uh, and has established an uh, annual meeting planner. Um, under Clause uh, 221 of the Local Government Regulations, there's a requirement to provide a report to Council following each meeting. Uh, this report provides a synopsis of the activities of the Audit and Risk Committee um, on its recent regular meeting and also a uh, special meeting um, and the information is provided. Again, um, uh, Scott Williams and the General Manager are here if there's any specific questions from Council. Otherwise, I believe that the recommendation there is straightforward, Mr Mayor. 
Thank you. Points of clarification, councillors, questions to the CEO or specialist officers on this item? not. Um, thank you, CEO. Would you please introduce the recommendation? The recommendation is that Council receive the report provided on the Audit and Risk Committee meetings held on 25th of August 2021 and 23rd of September 2021. Thank you. I seek a mover. Councillor Enright, again, um, any additional points of clarification? Any discussion to the item? Seek a seconder. Councillor McConnell, um, you wish to speak, Councillor Enright? I'm here, just happy to uh, verify the contents of the report as outlined. Thank you, um, Councillor Enright. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Anyone um, seeking leave to speak additionally to the motion? I would just take the opportunity as also participating there and I note that uh, Councillor McConnell as proxy has been joining us to, as an observer as well. Um, the, there's been a, a continuing improvement in the focus and operation of the Audit and Risk Committee. Um, it's certainly good to have um, clarity and confidence and stability around the internal resources supporting this. It's a very big program of work throughout the year. Um, and having these reports come forward in, a, a, in a, a really good summary way that clarifies the focus of the meetings is, is a further step of transparency and feedback for councillors to be aware of um, that independent oversight of, um, of a wide range of issues on, on behalf of the community. We thank the Audit and Risk Committee, including the independent members particularly for that effort. Anyone else seeking leave to speak? If not, council, you wish to close? No, thanks, me. I put the motion. Those in favour? Um, that's carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. We move to item 10.4. Um, CEO, uh, this is on page 24, councillors. I believe the CEO will introduce this. Thank you for your support. Um, CEO, you'll be introducing. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Councillors. In the absence of the General Manager of People and Strategy, I'll present this paper. Um, this uh, item relates to the end of year close down for the 2021-2022 period. Um, for Council's awareness, uh, the Council Enterprise Bargaining Certified Agreement requires that there be a minimum of one week Christmas close down. Of operational staff and operational supervisors um, and the dates um, and, and times of those close downs and the impacts on council offices and libraries and community and cultural centres is included in the recommendation. I, I will note that um, council will maintain a skeleton um, staff crew um, on duty at Canungra, Bow Desert and Boona depots There'll also be activities such as um, roadside maintenance, mowing, slashing, other activities throughout the Christmas period as scheduled and appropriate. And also um, employees will be identified and rostered for emergency situations and call outs as we recognise that that is, uh, can be a very busy period weather wise and um, people on the roads, Mr Mayor. So we um, will ensure that um, council is as available as it can be while ensuring that we um, give a rest period to um, our employees at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, CEO. Any um, questions for clarification to this report? Councillor Swanborough. Uh, look, just a question uh, for the CEO. The, the mountain is probably as busy as does it ever gets uh, over the Christmas period, and yet there's no body assigned. The dep our depot is completely closed. Uh, Canungra is open. Boona and Bay Desert uh, have skeleton crews on. Is it wise not to have anybody uh, uh, who's uh, there to do some critical work if we have a big storm or whatever on Tambourine Mountain during that period of time? Thank you, Mayor and Councils. Thank you, Councillor Swamber, for the question. 
Um, there will still be activities operating out of that depot as and when required. Um, we can certainly move staff from uh, either Bow Desert or Canungra, but there will certainly be officers that live on the mountain that potentially will be working at those other sites. So, so also we do 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 a, a forward look at what the weather situation may be, as that's the biggest impact on resourcing. And if the need arises or it's seen that um, we're, we're looking or at adverse weather, we'll certainly. Um, uh, appropriately size the, the number and position the number of crews. And that goes with resources as far as backhoes and other um, equipment required to assist in those sort of events. So most will be um, d uh, back in the depots and um, certainly there'll be um, equipment available at each site. Thank you for that clarification. Any, Councillor McConnell? Yeah, just oh, Sorry, Councillor Swanborough, if you're not finished, just switch off, please. Thank you. Now, Councillor McConnell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. To the CEO, I noticed there's three separate areas, which is the council offices and libraries, the community and cultural centres, and our operational staff. And all three have different dates and timings, which could cause confusion to not only uh, residents, but other people. So was there a reason that um, there was a difference, a major difference in all three areas? I'll perhaps refer that to um, another general manager, Councillor. Uh, thanks, Councillor uh, <clears throat> McConnell, for the question. I, I guess in um, in in summary and, and following consultation with the, the re relevant work areas, uh, the, the, the fact that the um, outdoor work staff have a, have a longer period is, is to recognise the, the the length of the construction period and to give them that, that well-earned break over the um, over that break. Um, in terms of the other areas, it's um, as Councillor um, Swanberg pointed out, it's probably the busy times and and having a less close down of council facilities and and um, and libraries and that it, it, it's probably you know, there's still a service that's required over that period and, and as such cor um, corresponds to the, um, the 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 variant in the um, in the in the break between the um, the staff areas. So I, hopefully that sort of answers um, some of the questions at some point. No, not really, because there's a difference. Um, when you look at the council offices and libraries, they close on the 23rd, on the afternoon of the 23rd, and reopen on the 4th. But the community and cultural centres close on the 23rd. They go back to work on the 4th, but don't reopen until the 10th. And looking looking down at the field operation, you know they they finish on the Monday. But the Saturday, Sunday is actually a uh, Christmas and, and Boxing Day, so they actually finish on the Friday afternoon. But it's more the concern, the difference in, in relation to the libraries and cultural centres, which could cause confusion. People think that uh, they're open when they won't be. They won't be, you know, there'll be people there, but they're not open to the 10th. The comment I'll, I'll make there is that um, as part of the, the dates as they're put forward from the uh, teams and general managers, they take into a number into account a number of different factors, and every year that I can recall, the dates have been slightly different in different areas. So I don't think there's anything um, specifically different this year. Um, in terms of ensuring that um, members of libraries or people who maybe um, have an activity booked at the community or cultural centre, um, Council ensures that there's plenty of information available on, on websites and Facebooks around um, those dates. Um, so I don't think there's anything unusual and I'm not sure that it's caused the problem in the past. I do recognise that it's um, on face value here. When you look at it, it's, it could be confusing, but I think when it's advertised, it's advertised separately around that specific activity to the, to the audience that would um, use or wish to come to a council office or library. Um, the, the specific reasoning around why some of the dates are different in different areas. Um, perhaps if the general manager who was going to present this paper was here, I, I might have an answer to that. But I would presume it's for workload, for um, closing down, for uh, potentially polishing floors in cultural centres and those types of things which might um, occur during that period. Um, so I think it's, um, it's timed for things which might happen behind the scenes so that when when the facility's opened, it's um, we don't have then um, closed down periods throughout the remainder of the year. 
So that's a presumption I'm making, probably based on past knowledge. Also, just on that, just had sort of had advice that the cultural centres don't open until the 10th uh, for the beginning of the school holiday programs. So they coincide with that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further clarifications? See, I'll get you to introduce the recommendation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Councillors. Uh, the recommendation is that one, Council note the end of year close down for 2021-2022 as follows. For Council offices and libraries from 4.30pm on Thursday 23rd December 2021 up to and including Monday 3rd of January 2022 with council reopening on Tuesday, 4th of January, 2021, which should be 2022. For councils, community and cultural centres from 4.30 p.m. on Thursday, 23rd of December, 2021, up to and including Monday, 10th January, 2022, with council reopening on Tuesday, 11th of January, 2022, with employees returning to work on Tuesday, 4th of January, 2022. And two, Council note annual close down for outdoor operational employees will be from Monday 27th of December 2021 up to and including Friday 7th of January 2022 with a return to work scheduled for Monday 10th of January 2022. Yeah, CK Mover, Councillor McConnell, um, any additional questions? Any additional discussion? Not a sec seconder. Councillor West. Um, Councillor McConnell, you wish to speak? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Anyone um, seeking leave to speak against? Anyone seeking leave to speak additionally for? If not, we, uh, um, we uh, put the motion. Those in favour? It's carried unanimously. Um, thank you, councillors. Um, and that allows the communication and planning for that to go ahead. Item 10.5, um, page 27 of the agenda. Um, CEO, um, you, the G, GM um, Council Sustainability will introduce this item, councillors. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, I'll, I'll present this on behalf of um, the General Manager of People and Strategy. I guess, um, uh, Mr Mayor, item 10.5 today presents the uh, the, the 2021 uh, 2020 2021 annual report. Uh, this represents a culmination uh, with the finalisation of um, the, the 2020 2021 financial year. Um, before going into sort of um, the, the body of the report, um, just highlight the, the, the requirements of why this is presented today. Um, Section 182 of the local government regulation requires that um, the annual report is, is, is provided for consideration by council. Uh, no later than uh, 30 days upon receipt of the signed audited financial statements. Um, council has uh, received confirmation of the uh, financial statements from the Queensland Audit Office on the 23rd of September, uh, requiring this to be provided at, the, um, at, at this meeting to, to meet those necessary timeframes. Um, there's a number of um, points uh, to go through, Mr. Mayor, and I'll certainly uh, provide some highlights from a financial perspective, um, but I think the um, I'll pass the, on to the CEO to provide a summary of key outcomes of, 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 the, of the year that's just um, elapsed. Right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, General Manager. Um, it's always a great pleasure, Mr. Mayor and Councillors, to present the annual report. Um, when I think back to the period uh, 2021 um, financial year. It was a very difficult period when we think back with COVID. Um, we had lockdowns. Um, there was all sorts of restrictions. Um, we had up to 50% of our employees at different times working from home. And I'm pleased to say that the organisation rose to the challenge. Um, there was restrictions obviously in um, resourcing and often impacts on our timing. But it was another amazing year. And I think um, you know, I'd like to thank the community for their support and, and councillors and, and yourself, Mayor, for guidance and direction and the um, employees of this uh, great organisation for their commitment through another period of 12 months. Um, I did uh, want to go through and highlight some aspects of the annual re report, and there's a number of these. 
Um, so I'm, I'm picking from pages within the annual report, but um, some of the highlight pages. Uh, I just uh, wanted to mention around the protection that uh, Council um, afforded to koala habitat in the Tambourine Village area by planting more than 4,000 native shrubs and trees over two hectares of land and restoring a further eight hectares um, through weed treatment. Um, the provision of almost 40,000 trees to encourage sustainable land practices and restore waterways and further beautify our region. Uh, we were also involved in a series of preparedness activities to mitigate bushfire risks and Council was involved um, in the provision of $102,000 to community and environmental groups to undertake a number of conservation projects. If you recall also that Council signed up to the Small Business Friendly Council Initiative with the Queensland Small Business Commissioner. I think we were the second Council in Queensland to do so. Um, we facilitated a study uh, to secure a, a, a reliable water supply for the agricultural industry in the Worrell and Fassifern Valley region. Uh, delivered 85 scenic rim eat local week events prior to the COVID lockdown. Uh, launched a dedicated website to showcase events across the region um, called whatsonscenicrim.com and people can subscribe to that to put their own events on or go to that source to find out information about what's going on in the region. Um, council demonstrated its commitment to improving customers' experience uh, with Council by adopting the first ever customer experience strategy, one of our continuous improvement programs there, Mr Mayor. Uh, we received a teamwork award at the Local Government Managers Australia Queensland 2020 Awards for Excellence for Council's response to COVID-19, which was undertaken as a, on a risk assessment basis, and that was great news at that time. Um, adopted the first ever amendments to the Scenic Room Planning Scheme 2020 as part of a commitment to regularly review and update the planning scheme over a five-year schedule. I started a community consultation on Scenic Room's first ever growth management strategy. I engaged with local business industry to support a smart region strategy for the Scenic Room and processed an increased number of development applications and building and plumbing applications with some um, very amazing figures um, this year. Completed the $3.2 million revitalisation of the Boona Town Centre. Unveiled the amazing curtain backdrop um, in the cultural centre in Boona, which preserved much of Boona's early history uh, and also announced the um, funding for the refurbishment of the Tambourine uh, Mountain Library. Uh, just in terms of the planning figures and building figures I referred to before, I've just found my notes there. And in 2020-2021, Council saw 232 new lots approved, almost 100 more than the previous financial year and the largest yearly total in the past five years. Council also approved 129 material change of use applications, which have been steadily growing in the past five years and a total of 1,104 building approvals and 500 plumbing approvals were issued in that same period. In terms of asset management, Council delivered four comprehensive asset management plans that distilled several years of data to collection to report that Council was the custodian of approximately $1 billion worth of community facilities and infrastructure assets. Council provided uh, $26.6 million in 2021 for roads, bridges, footpaths and drainage in line with our commitment to maintaining renewing infrastructure, a key driver of the region's economy. Another big achievement, Mr Mayor, was the Scenic Rim's progression towards zero avoidable waste to landfill with Council's adoption of the updated Waste Management and Resource Recovery Strategy and commence the preparation and the bulk earthworks for the 11 hectare by Desert Enterprise Precinct Expansion Project. Also, I'd like to mention that um, Council provided support to not-for-profit community groups through Council's Community Grants Program to the tune of $266,000 and further $28,000 of in-kind support. Um, 
implemented a new self-service kiosk at uh, Council's libraries using a special radio frequency identification marker in, in the items that people can check out. And also, despite um, everything, de delivered a comprehensive arts and cultural program, including workshops, exhibitions, online and live arts dinners, concerts, movies, uh, and supported emerging artists as much as possible. Some, some amazing um, activities that were undertaken throughout the year. That's just a snapshot of uh, what's contained within the annual report. I might um, refer now to the general manager just to talk about the financial highlights, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, um, GM Council Sustainability, thank you. Thank you, Samir. Yes, as, as part of the annual report, it, that contains the, um, the, the details around the order of the financials, but it will also make, um, make reference to um, page 20 of the annual report, which gives a, the, the community financial, which sort of um, allows the community members um, to gra grab some um, understanding of the way the year transpired from a financial perspective in non-accounting language. Um, and I guess now I'll provide some, some key financial highlights in, in no particular order, but I, I thought just as of a reference out of the order of financials, um, 2021, 2020, 2021 saw an, an increase of about 41% in, in uh, user pay uh, revenues. This, this equates to about additional 1.783 million um, in additional revenues that council uh, realised. And as indicated before by the, um, by the CEO, you know, activities associated with the building plumbing plan, uh, building plumbing planning um, fees, you know, highlighting the, the level of uh, resiliency uh, of the region during the COVID-19 pandemic um, and, and showing the confidence um, to undertake these activities as well. Um, also, we saw um, resilience in, in the attractiveness of the region uh, by uh, increase in our um, caravan park fees, uh, as well as uh, property search fees, you know, sparking a continued interest in, in holidaying and investing uh, within the region. Um, in terms of uh, recurrent or operating grants, um, we saw an increase of 32% or about 1.91 million. This is on the back of continued funding assistance for recovery through the COVID-19 pandemic and the summer bushfires that, that occurred a number of, a couple of years back. We've also, um, you know, maintain strong levels of capital grants um, with $20.44 million in successful grants being recognised. Um, this, this is um, certainly highlighted continued focus by council teams in identifying key assets and projects for submission towards both the Queensland and Australian government funding programs. Without these capital grants, um, you know, the council would be certainly uh, behind the eight ball in trying to fund all our obligations in, in meeting uh, our um, uh, renewals of, of our assets. Certainly, um, you know, very uh, appreciative of the levels of um, continued funding from both Queensland and Australian governments. Um, finance costs, now these increased by about 2.96 million. Uh, the bulk of these costs, uh, again, relate to the bulk of about 2.87 million, relate to the uh, refinancing of around $22.31 million in uh, legacy borrowings, um, and, and these borrowings were, were borrowed at the um, higher fixed uh, interest rates. And I guess while council incurred the additional costs um, as part of the early repayments, um, the forecasted savings associated with the reduced interest rate obligations meant that council could seek um, the additional borrowings with, with no impact to operating results. Um, and this is evident with the additional borrowings of $15 million, which are currently being considered uh, to fund a range of projects that can have lasting beneficial impacts to the communities and the region as a whole. Um, the, the CEO touched on the um, asset management plans, but um, Council continues to maintain a gross amount of about $1.126 billion in pro property plant and equipment assets um, and, and, and have with a written down value of about $909 million. Of the gross uh, uh, values, $857.3 million relate to Council's road bridge network uh, with additional $53 million in drainage structures. Um, Council is also maintaining $59.3 million in land assets as well as um, a further $49.9 in buildings. Um, in, in terms of the uh, process associated with the uh, external review, of um, council operations, you know, council received certification from the Queensland Audit Office on 30th of September, with the Auditor General providing an unmodified audit opinion of the 2020-2021 financial statements, 
uh, and this indicates that the statements uh, uh, were are a true and fair view of council's financial positions as of 30th of June 2021, and as and that the statements comply with local government act, local government regulation, and the Australian accounting standards. Um, also, part of the um, audit review process, um, the Queensland Audit Office um, reviewed council systems and processes and provided effective rating. Uh, which, which is sort of highlighted in green um, for all five of the internal control metrics. Um, these are control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication and monitoring activities. Um, Council continues to pride itself on these external reviews and, and draws confidence in the assessment provided by the Queensland Audit Office. That's just sort of um, some, some, some brief highlights from, from a financial perspective, but um, Mr. Mayor, as you can gauge from both the highlights identified by the CEO and the financial highlights, the annual report brings together the performance data relating to the annual operational plan, day-to-day -day service delivery and implementation of um, a range of strategies to ensure the long-term success of Council. Um, following today's meeting um, and, and, and once um, the annual report is adopted, an online version of the annual report will be uploaded to the Council website and shared with the community via our social media outlets. Um, a fully accessible digital version uh, compatible with screen readers will, will also be made available next week and councils will have before them an unbound copy printed in-house. Uh, once adopted, um, these will be um, um, professionally uh, printed um, and made available and the uh, to the community will be able to request a printed copy from our customer service centres. Um, open the floor for any clarity or questions. Um, thank you, CEO and GM for that um, expansive introduction and um, also for the hard copy, um, which has certainly helped the readability from some of the um, draft versions online. Um, uh, Points for clarification, um, councillors, questions to the CEO or the GM, um, Councillor Enright. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And may I preface my question uh, with saying what a fantastic document um, and not just for its presentation, but for the content in uh, outlining just the hundreds and hundreds of things that have been done through the last 12 months. And I congratulate the CEO and the four general managers uh, and their, their staff under their portfolios for the delivery of uh, another outstanding year. Um, in the absence of uh, GM people in strategy, I wonder if I could ask uh, the CEO a question regarding the teamwork award uh, at the local government managers uh, uh, Australia Queensland Awards. It just would be interesting to uh, understand the, uh, the the background to that uh, and I note that it was um, tied to the complexities of uh, the challenging year uh, relevant to COVID. So I'd just be interested to know a little bit more about that. Thank you, CEO. Uh, thank you for the question, Councillor Enright. Um, the, the award, the Teamwork Award, um, focused on the a steering committee that was established internally, which was normally our disaster management steering committee. So it was uh, developed to look at, um, at the issue of COVID and council's immediate response um, to COVID. Um, and I would guess that that was around March or so 2020. Um, it couldn't have been because otherwise it wouldn't be in this annual report, would it? So it would have had to have been, the award would have been later, but that's when the steering committee developed. So just going through that in my head. Um, but it was the way in which the um, team members representing different uh, areas of council across the organisation came um, with the view that we needed to continue council's business best way we could possible whilst we were seeing centres close, um, playgrounds close, libraries close. Um, a whole load of activities which um, community are used to accessing um, placed off limits to COVID, but we still as an organisation needed to uh, deliver as many services as we possibly could. So that was about services going online. So 
um, libraries uh, developed click and collect activities um, similar that you would see in shops these days where people could order um, their requirements and then head to the library to collect them. Um, arts dinners and the rest were going, went online. A number of uh, community um, events were held online um, and we were able to um, still run the organisation with um, up to 200 of our employees working at home with a device which enabled them to take calls from customers, um, still process building applications, plumbing applications and the like, but doing it outside of the, um, the what we would know as our main customer service centre. Um, but it was the way that we assessed all of those on a risk assessment basis and made sure that we had mitigations in place for serious um, actions to protect um, customers and protect our employees. And some of the steps we took internally uh, to reduce um, officers um, heading between different depots or different offices, uh, keeping them in the location that they are at. Um, so a number of those steps that were taken um, with the support of employees um, and council at the time um, resulted in in that win. Um, so we were able to deliver everything we possibly could in a completely foreign environment to how people were used to working. And we saw uh, productivity improvements as well as um, amazing technology displayed um, with um, the best of our officers being able to ensure that people could work uh, remotely and still conduct council's business. Hopefully that responds to your inquiry, Councillor. Yeah, thank you, CEO. It certainly does, and uh, um, it's amazing what can be done when there's a, a focus and, and teamwork where everyone is uh, heading toward a, a mutually beneficial outcome. So congratulations to all. May I ask Further question. another question? Yep. Yeah. Um, I note, CEO, in the final paragraph of your uh, report, the annual report, um, a comment about um, committed to fostering a culture of continuous improvement within the organisation. Um, just wonder if you would be able to expand on that for us. Uh, thank you, Councillor Enright. Um, continuous improvement is a requirement uh, under the legislation um, of um, employees within the organisation to always look at um, ways of doing our business better and smarter. Um, I think one of the focuses that we had um, in in that period was the development of our new customer experience strategy where we've looked at um, the ways that we uh, communicate um, and deal with um, um, inquiries and complaints and other feedback from customers and have uh, planned a way forward in which to improve all of those actions as a continuous improvement cycle um, so that we're able to meet the requirements that Council has set um, in its um, customer charter. So I think um, that that means a whole host of different ways of doing business across the organisation, uh, understanding um, our customers better and being able to tailor our responses better. We're not there at this point, but in terms of uh, continuous improvement, we've identified what it is we need to do and we're going about um, making those changes which we would hope to be able to report upon in the 21-22 annual report. Thank you. Further questions for clarity to the annual report? Councillors, Councillor West. Thank you, Mayor. It looks certainly a very, very readable document. And I just wanted to ask the um, general manager I know you mentioned it will be on the council website and we'll have some copies at the customer contact centres, but just to ensure that we have a copy in all our libraries, because I know there's a number of people who are maybe not so internet savvy and don't have reliable internet. They like to come and read a hard copy, I found over the years. No problem. Take that Thank, Thank you. you. Points of clarification, councillors. Uh, councillor Swanborough. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just um, wanted to seek clarification on page 120 of the annual report. It indicates that the full-time equivalent staff uh, during the year went from 384 persons to 413, so that's 29 additional staff uh, displayed in the annual report. 
it breaks it down and it says that there were 19 new staff added to administration and there was only 10 new staff dedicated to outdoor uh, workforce um, for DEPIO and outdoor staff. Given that uh, most of the grant money that uh, we have received in that year, and I think it looks like from the annual report, I think it was two or three billion more than um, the previous year. Um, and most of that is outside work uh, that we're doing. Have we got the ratios right? Um, why would the administration be growing at nearly twice the rate of our external staff that deliver the services and, um, and the capital works for us? Thanks for your question, Councillor Swanbro. I, I will preface the um, answer by saying this, this, this sort of metric has always been the bane of controversy. It's an accountant's view, not a, um, the, the people and strategy or the HR structure. Now, the way this metric is actually calculated is that the pay period before 30th of June, um, you, you calculate the total number of hours that are actually worked for that period and then you divide it based on the, the different awards of the admin and the um, um, outdoor staff. So it's not the true reflective of the actual establishment um, and depending on the number of vacancies at that time or the, the absences. So it's not a true indication of, of, of what you've indicated there. It's really a, a financial metric in capturing the number of hours worked on that particular fortnight before the um, end of the financial year. Um, however, you know, it's not, it, it's, yeah, it's not truly reflective of, of the actual uh, swings and roundabouts when it comes to the establishment. Um, further you, question, Councillor Swan. Yeah, my further question following on from that question is, um, what do you think the true metric is? Well, I think we provide that on a, on, on a regular basis, you know, certainly monthly when it comes to the um, you know, vacancy factors with, with staff and the likes. And I guess um, the, the question's always been put on notice to the uh, GM people and strategy around the number of uh, vacancies at, at that you know, period in time in the monthly um, uh, finance reports are, are always provided. Um, I don't have the, the, the relevant exact numbers and I don't want to certainly um, put um, that, um, you know, give you the wrong sort of um, details, but certainly take that on notice and provide that query to um, uh, general manager people's strategy to, um, to provide the advice at that point in time. Further questions? Um, I, can, as CEO, can I ask a question in light of that, just to clarify, um, any changes to um, create or add po additional positions to the organisation? Um, what's the process for that from a budget process for councillors to have visibility if there are intentions to um, add or increase positions? I could provide the initial um, um, answer that, uh, Mr Mayor. I, I guess, you know, when council determines um, uh, or considers the, the budget at any point in time, any increase in levels of service is always put forward as a, you know, with, with zero based budgeting, we always put through any additional staff as a, um, what we deem new initiative. And so council are aware what, um, what those costs relate to in terms of um, additional service and or additional levels of service. However, during a, um, 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 in, in, in the course of the, the financial year, as the times elapse, um, you know, we have opportunities for full um, budget review or budget amendments that are, that are provided to uh, Council for the awareness. And, and certainly where there are projects uh, requiring delivery and um, yeah, with, with vacancies um, being um, um, a, a hindrance to the delivery of those projects, there are at times when, um, those uh, budget amounts where they where they have been salaries and wages are, are sought to be converted to um, materials and services for the uh, purposes of, of, of and vice versa for the purposes of, of trying to get the uh, delivery on that um, item uh, but certainly it, it's always put forward to, to council um, during budget processes or budget amendments um, the levels of um, um, staffing re required. Thank you. Can I ask a further question to the GM Asset and Environment Sustainability? In terms of the delivery of um, grant programs and the a wide range of both our own capital programs, 
um, as well as um, grant funded programs. Um, does council try to deliver all of those within its own resource or does it reach out to use a wider range of people both with specific expertise or as uh, expansion resource to avoid um, uh, having too many employees and direct employment? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, with regard to your question, um, generally speaking, we, we try and keep our workforce at a particular skill level and a certain level that is a baseline level. When we get um, additional funding through um, whether it be grants or, or, or other means, um, we certainly look at um, supplementing our workforce either through um, assistance through um, um, additional contractors that support those crews or we actually go out to full contract and we actually use um, supp supplies for specific projects. Probably the most um, um, specific of those are when we install a concrete bridge, we go to um, a contractors that are specialists in that field. Um, and certainly um, I'll use the example of the Bow Desert Business Park where there's been some um, work there that's um, uh, not work that we've done more recently with the installation of um, um, sewer and water. We've um, certainly a, a, a engaged a, a, a secondary contractor to come in and do some of that work to supplement or continue to um, provide that um, work to us. Um, we can have probably equivalent to the same number of um, contractors on the ground as we do um, workforce in the field at any given time. Um, and in some instances, we may even have more. So, um, and likewise for um, building maintenance, uh, we don't have painters on staff. So we actually um, engage a painter to come in and, and paint, a, paint a section of, of the building or otherwise. So um, realistically, we can't be or can't support all the different skills that are required to maintain the assets that we have. So we certainly um, 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 enjoy utilising others to provide those services. Thank you. Um, further clarifications, Councillor Chalk. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's just that in our total expenses, that 37% makes up um, by employee benefits. Um, is that considered um, on par with other similar size LGAs in Queensland? With it. Thanks for your question, Councillor um, Chalk. I, I guess without having studied the other um, councils at this particular time, around the, the, the 30 to the 40 is probably the, the standard rate. I know when I started with council, that was at a higher, um, be it for, for memory, it was around 38 or 42 per cent um, in, in previous reports. Um, but I guess when you look at a, a, a third, a third, a third in terms of um, that, that type of breakdown is, is consistent. I guess it's, um, um, you know, you don't want all staff and, and no materials and services because obviously, uh, unless it's all um, um, labour intensive, the, the, the stuff that's been delivered. Um, but certainly, it's not um, it's not a, a worrying trend. But I can certainly, um, you know, part of the process provides some um, comparatives. Um, uh, so part of the upcoming budget process certainly provide comparatives from um, other councils of, of what those breakdowns are. But it's certainly not a um, uh, an area of concern and. And you can look at the, um, 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 yeah, some of the pages within the um, order of the financial statements, um, the metrics that the Queensland Audit Office compare previous year expenditures. Um, yeah, they they probably compare more if we spent an overabundance of um, um, additional um, dollars on materials and services as compared to previous year. Yeah, you know, what changes in operations and 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 that can um, you know for for the 2020 2021 financial year. With the with wages and uh, materials and services, a lot of that can be pinned down to that additional funding that we did receive as part of the bushfire and, and COVID that has required additional staffing, additional um, uh, expenditures to be um, undertaken. Thank you, GM. Yeah, Councillor McGuinness. Uh, yes, Mayor. Along the same line, if I could ask the. Uh, not only for that, what Councillor Chalk has raised, but also could we look at comparing to our workplace health and safety compared to other councils. Uh, we, it's important that we do take safety seriously, but uh, we seem to go overboard in some areas. And 
and I think it would be good to see where we stand in in our in our spend of uh, workplace health and safety uh, compared to other councillors our size. Thanks, Councillor Williams. We'll certainly um, include that in the as a as a point. Any other points of clarification, Councillor Enright? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, a question to GM Council Sustainability. Um, Oliver, in the summary, we note that 32% of our contestable materials and services were sourced locally, uh, almost um, $18 million in this financial year was spent on businesses within the scenic rim. Um, I'm just wondering if you could outline just some of the avenues that we use to encourage businesses and some perhaps if there's any success stories that come to mind. I think this is on the back of um, obviously commitment by council in 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 recognising um, the the local suppliers and, and certainly providing avenues for them to compete on local businesses uh, for council works and and, and activities. Um, you know, there's a there's a number of wide ranging stories. There's a number of um, certainly some um, um, success stories where um, yeah businesses have. Um, consulted or have worked with council in identifying um, the council needs and where there is a, um, a, a lack of um, availability within the region and they've become suppliers or stockers of those particular items. And we'll certainly work with um, um, regional prosperity teams to further develop um, the relationship between council and the, um, the various businesses throughout the region to, to see what else can be um, 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 increased or, or or come out as a result of um, um, avenues. Um, I, I, I guess, furthermore, there's um, there's 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 a lot more there's a lot more opportunities. Um, yeah, you know, we're currently in the midst of a, um, a, a procurement review to certainly um, embed or or capture or formalise the intent of council around um, local preferencing. Um, at 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 this point in time outside of um, um, provisions contained in the COVID-19 um, stimulus initiatives. You know, there's nothing formally in our procurement um, policy that um, provides great significance around um, trying to drive uh, local spend more. Um, the, the teams do work um, um, closely with uh, stores and procurement where they identify uh, or suggestives are provided when um, when purchase orders are awaiting release, where they indicate, did you, um, you know, did realise that this can be sourced locally? Um, so suggestions like that, uh, I guess, um, are providing council with the avenue to try and drive that increased local spend. Um, it is a metric that's provided for uh, monthly, and I certainly um, highlight on a monthly basis, um, 30, 32% this financial year, I know in our um, annual operating, annual operational plan for 2021-2022, we've set a high bar of 35%. So, you know, we certainly want to get out there and and, and look to further increase um, that. Thank you. Um, further clarification, Councillor McConnell. Yeah, just a quick one to the GM again, pages uh, 26 and 27. Uh, just deals with um, the first one I'll do is a year cash and balance. There was a massive increase, and um, obviously that was the money that we borrowed uh, to assist with some legacy issues, I suppose, um, in our refinancing. Can you just uh, go through why we refinanced again and and the benefits uh, that will bring in the long term? Thanks, Mr. Mr. Uh, Councillor McConnell. Yes, I, that, that's correct. I guess the um, you know, the opportunity to, to refinance, as, as provided before, certainly provides a, uh, a welcome opportunity for council to consider um, that initiative provided by the um, uh, Queensland government. Um, you know, some of those loans, uh, historic loans, were at a higher um, interest rates. Um, the opportunity to certainly borrow at the revised rates at fixed terms, you know, provides certainty in our long-term financial forecasting of what our obligations are in, in servicing those loans. 
Um, and what's that, what that has equated to is, is by refinancing um, you know, the $22.3 million in, in legacy loans has freed up um, 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 operating um, savings to enable the servicing of that additional $15 million in borrowings, which, which um, you know, it's in the midst of council consideration at the moment to look at some um, projects that will benefit the community and the region as a whole going forward. Um, it, it should be noted that, that, that um, you know, it, it made common sense to otherwise, um, you know, council didn't have to refinance, but that money, um, that those additional dollars would have gone towards servicing those loans at that high rate. So I guess from a prudent financial um, management perspective, um, bringing that matter to council for consideration, um, you know, made practical sense. So can you just... Um inform the listeners the length of the loan and the um, interest rate? It's, I, I probably can't disclose the interest rate, okay. Um, okay. Uh, it, but it is significantly lower than what the commercial rates are in, in single figures and um, and the, the term of the loan is for, for 20 years. Um, but yeah, very, very, um, and, and council only, um, is only able to borrow through Queensland Treasury Corporation. And Queensland Treasury Corporation obviously doesn't operate like a normal commercial bank. Um, it, it's able to source dollars um, at very competitive um, rates, similar to the, what it provides to the Queensland government. So we're talking um, you know, between one to three percent. Uh, okay, on page uh, the back end of twenty six and twenty seven deals with the financial uh, sustainability. Um, a couple of the graphs there show us underneath the minimum target. Uh, and below the lower target in regards to asset sustainability ratio, the financial liabilities ratio and the operating surplus ratio. Would you be able to go through those and, and uh, just enlighten us how we're going to uh, get back up above those minimum targets? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll start with the operating surplus ratio. So um, you can see for the last couple of um, uh, financial years 19, 20, and 2021 20, have been below um, the, uh, the the lower limits of what the um, the department and, and Queensland Treasury um, identifies as a, the you know, um, a key indicator for sustainability. I guess, and that that's on the back of um, council committing to adopt those budgets at, at those operating surfaces rather than trying to to pass on them additional through additional rate rises. Um, you know, it, it certainly went against the the normal um, indicative long term financial forecast that was the of the the, the percentage increases that were contained in the um, long term financial forecast. But but council made the um, uh, the commitment given the uncertainty around the the impacts at that particular time, especially for nineteen twenty around the um, COVID and and the ongoing impacts in in twenty twenty one. However. Um, you know, with, with the upcoming budget process, there is a, uh, um, you know, we'll certainly provide the, the necessary information for, for council again to make a um, informed decision around what, what, what that would be. Uh, if I could um, just ask a question on that as before we go on. Yeah. Um, in relation to those uh, me, negative, negative figures for 2019, 20, 2020, 2021, uh, is it likely that the increase in administrative staff which are recurring expenses would have an impact on that particular result? Um, I'll answer that in two parts. I guess the, if you look at the, if you do a deep dive um, look into the uh, financial statements for 2021, 2020, 2021, if you actually take off the $2.8 million as, as a result of the refinancing activities which we regard as extraordinary outside of normal operations, Council would actually um, finish the year um, relatively balanced. Uh, however, um, you know, to, uh, the refinancing is a refinancing. However, it, it's not. It wasn't considered as normal, normal um, in your normal activities of council. So, if you actually net that the the refinancing for the, the year that we're talking about now, it, it actually brings council closer to a um, back to a balanced result. Um, in in answering the, the the second part of the query, I, I guess count. Um, yeah, we, we have to look back at, at what was adopted in the budget for 21-22. Now, the budget was adopted at a one, uh, an operating deficit again of $1 million. So I guess I, I'm finding it hard to correlate with the additional administrative costs given that 
um, new initiatives totaled about 1.2. So you know we didn't we didn't balance the um, 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 the books by um, increasing uh, rates at, a, at above or beyond what was necessarily required. So we still council sorry council still um, adopted the budget for 2021 2021 2022 at an operating deficit of about one million dollars. So hopefully that sort of provides some insights mm -hmm. around that. So back, Councillor yeah. McConnell, do you have a further further part oh, to the question? Yes. Councillor, yes. going to finish Con off the last yes, one, please. Continuing the, um, the, the Councillor Swanbrook, can I just ask again? Turn your microphone off. And um, thank you. Uh, continuing the, the last couple of um, um, sustainability ratios, I guess um, you know the 18, 19, 19, 20 financial years saw some some well above um, expectations around the. Um, um, asset renewals. I guess a change in some of the ways that um, we were capturing renewals as to upgrades, some uh, you know, some um, differentiation. It, it's slight for so for 2021, 2020, 2021 financial year. It's slightly below um, um, what I guess the, the minimum target is around 90%. You know, renewals of assets at around 90%. However, it's not too far off. Um, there was a number of um, uh, new assets that were so the so it's certainly been built um, in in that period, but it's nothing to um, um, to be sort of overly um, worrying worrying of. I, I guess you know in the the Queensland audit report table to Parliament for the nineteen twenty financial year, it indicated Council, even though the last couple of years have have been a, a operating deficits, the five year averages um, saw that Council was in a in a really um, good position. Um, the net financial sustainability ratio, that, that, I mean, that just still indicates um, that even though uh, we did refinance in, in 2021, that we're still below, that we can um, service our um, um, existing debts and obligations. Um, and, you know, we're certainly not above the 60%. Hopefully that's provided those. Thank you. Thank you. Um, further clarifications? Councillor? Swambra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, on page 106 uh, of the annual report, it talks about the the uh, financial year trunk infrastructure information summary. And I'm and uh, just looking at the the forecasts down there. It sort of indicates that our infrastructure charges revenue is of the order of 2.2 .2 million, 2.3 and 20. 223 but 2122 2.2 but our, our trunk infrastructure expenditure is 24 million 501 so there's a there's a little there's a big difference between what we seem to be uh, getting in revenue for trunk infrastructure as to what we spend on trunk infrastructure and I was just wondering if the GM could explain you know, if that's sustainable, or what we might be doing to correct that. I'll take. I'll answer that in the first part, and I'll hand it over to um, GM Essence. I, I guess it's a requirement that you know we recognise the trunk infrastructure coming in uh, as as developer charges, and and certainly that just provides one stream of funding for our capital works. So whilst there's a there's twenty four million dollars, there, there are other avenues to fund that, you know, including depreciation. Um, you know, uh, part of the uh, general revenue, um, you know, and also the um, separate charge for community infrastructure. So that that's just one. So the, the community infrastructure that we um, that we receive from uh, developments and things that's just formed one revenue stream for the, um, the the capital works required. So hopefully, I'll provide to um, GM Essence Sustainability to provide further. Yeah, so um, in reference to your question, the actual income that's um, generated is probably best answered by our planning section, but I'll summarise it um, here that um, infrastructure charges are set um, by others other than us in, in most cases. Um, so the state actually has um, a baseline of what infrastructure charges uh, are required to be paid by developers. It's certainly, if it was paid on a um, the actual um, uh, cost to some of the trunk infrastructure certainly um, could potentially be higher. Um, but the reality of it is, is that from a um, prioritisation point of view, um, generally speaking, these truck infrastructure assets are certainly used by a larger volume of, um, of, of um, um, 
users of that, that sort of service. And um, the, the reality of it is, is that that's where the level of investment is at this point in time. So um, I guess that uh, the figures here show the income from um, the, the developer side of things. But as Oliver mentioned, there's still a need for council to, um, to invest in those um, pieces of infrastructure also. Thank you, GM. Do you have a further question? Councilor? Yeah, it's just on the same page. Uh, my question is in relation to Long Road. It it um, it says there was seven hundred and nineteen thousand dollars spent on Long Road. I wonder if you could tell me what that trunk infrastructure expenditure was uh, associated with. So Long Road, there was footpath works undertaken on Long Road. Um, it was a continuation of a stage two of um, the project that connected um, the Tambourine Mountain Primary School through to the um, uh, Tambourine Mountain Sports Complex. So there was a um, so uh, with that particular project, there were some complexities around the northern end, um, getting the levels right and actually um, providing a safe crossing point for for those using that um, particular walking area. So it didn't have anything to do with the Curtis Road uh, work that was done on that corner of Long Road as well? Yes, I think some of that would have been with regard to the footpath or the majority of that was footpath works. Thank you for that clarification. Further clarifications? If not, um, GM, would you introduce the recommendation, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, item 10.5, there's three parts of the recommendation. I'll read each one now. Um, the recommendation is that one, Council adopt the draft 2020-2021 Scenic Rim Regional Council Annual Report. Two, Council delegate to the Chief Executive Officer the power to make minor grammatical and formatting changes to the 2020-2021 Scenic Room Regional Council Annual Report, if required, after its adoption by Council and prior to publishing the document for public access. And three, Council note the general purpose financial statements for year ended 30 June 2021. Seeker mover. Councillor McInnes. Um, any further questions, councillors? Any further discussion? Seek a seconder. Councillor West. Um, Councillor McGuinness, you wish to speak? Uh, no, I'm right. Uh, it, I think it gives a pretty good, uh, only to say that the, it gives a pretty good account of uh, what's happened for the year and congratulations to all those concerned in compiling it. Thank you. Anyone um, wishing to speak against? Anyone seeking leave to speak additionally? Councillor West. Thank you, Mayor. Look, I would like to also acknowledge all the officers who've been involved in this document. Um, it's certainly a very readable document and has been made even more readable this year. I know very consciously they have worked on that. And I guess just also as far as the media department go, who have been compromised staff wise at the moment, this is a very major document for them to be getting out. And so thank you for all of that. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Councilman Mc... Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd certainly endorse those previous comments. Uh, it certainly is a, a great document, a great report on what's happened over the last 12 months. Uh, and it does highlight just the, so, the hundreds and hundreds of uh, projects and programs that are delivered, uh, both in a capital nature as well as that of uh, an operational delivery of services to our community and uh, my wholehearted congratulations to the organisation for delivering these range of services and deliveries uh, to our community. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else seeking leave to speak for the motion? If not, I would seek leave to speak and just um, congratulate the CEO and his team on what this report tells us under very trying circumstances was a very um, extensive array of delivery of um, impacts and benefits for our communities, um, benefits in infrastructure, benefits in services through difficult times. Um, and we've all um, ridden that horse as well, but the officers are the ones who deliver it and it's a good snapshot to recall that. 
to also recognise that the auditor is um, comfortable with the focus of our existence and the format of the report is worth calling out as it's another step forward in modernising um, and um, bringing the information into a more usable form, particularly with the functionality for those um, vision impaired that was switched on last year, the opportunity for people to have better access, uh, a wider range of people to have access in the community is a real plus. So thank you and I commend the annual report as well. Councillor McGuinness, you wish to close? No, I'm right. Thanks, Mayor. We put the motion. Those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Um, at um, at 10.45, we are going to adjourn for um, 20 minutes for a quick refreshment and stretch the legs. Um, for those in the gallery, please take the time to a cup of tea or your favourite um, non-alcoholic beverage at this time of day and um, rejoin us at, um, at 11.05 if you please. And um, we'll just pause there. Thank you. Welcome back, councillors, uh, executive and officers, and welcome back to those joining us in the digital gallery as we resume our meeting and turn our attentions to item 10.6. I'll ask the GM Council Sustainability to introduce this item, which commences on page 31 of the agenda, if you are following along. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and yes, welcome back to the listeners out there listening to the live broadcast of today's meeting. Um, item 10.6, I, I guess this, Mr. Mayor and Councillors, this item and the next item um, uh, really intend to provide clarity around previously raised uh, matters or concerns that emanated from um, prior council meetings. Um, in, in part, this allows for um, closure, um, both uh, for council and, and, and the community that, that were listening at, at those particular points in time. Uh, I, I will make reference that while 10 point, uh, item 10.6 makes reference to correspondence uh, received from the department, and, and it certainly provides um, dot points around what was contained in, the, um, um, in that correspondence. For the purpose of 10.6, it, it really just relates to the first dot, dot point, two dot point items. Um, uh, that is a, the definition of, of budget and how it applies to, in particular, to section 254J3C. Um, I, I will make further reference, Mr. Mayor, that whilst the, um, the focus is on the budget clarification matter, um, it, it should also be pointed out that there is um, um, no evidence, um, and it was raised earlier in today's discussions, there is certainly no evidence from relevant authorities to indicate Council um, is currently non-conforming non or acting unlawfully uh, with its current meeting platforms and meeting suite of documents. Um, there is a body of work uh, currently being undertaken and it will certainly um, um, progress through informing councillors at a workshop and, and progressing to uh, an open um, ordinary council meeting. Um, uh, recognising advice around some points um, that, that pertain to um, council uh, meeting structures and, and or meeting um, suite of documents, but nothing to the extent that contradicts uh, relevant legislation. Um, noting also that in, in, in circumstances where an anomaly may arise uh, contained in, in current council policy, the legislation will, will always be the, um, the statutory head of power. Um, Back in, in to the report at hand, item 10.6, this relates to a, um, a, a previous um, circumstance where um, confirmation was, was sought around the definition um, of budget as it related to section 254J3C and whether or not um, council was applying this in the correct context um, as contained in the um, uh, in, in the report, um, um, council officers sought advice from the department to make sure that um, um, that in fact it was used in, in the um, appropriate uh, mechanism that was contained in the legislation and, and certainly sought um, secondary advice from legal advisors to make sure that um, you know, the use was consistent um, or the interpretation with officers was consistent, consistent with the um, intent of the legislation. 
um, I take the matter, uh, I take the report as being read and open the for further clar clarification, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, GM, for introducing it. Are there uh, any points for clarification that councillors wish to ask? Councillor Swamber. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My, my question is um, in relation to the statement about the first two points um, uh, about uh, the meeting suite of documents. Um, could you advise me why we're doing uh, a, a review of the meeting suite of documents? Um, it, it's, it's emanated out of um, some, uh, I, I guess, confusion or some misinterpretation and certainly some points that, that have necessitated in order to you know, not let these matters um, um, you know, bog down proceedings. You know, it, it was, we, we thought we'd, we'd undertake the process, um, external review, uh, both from uh, um, the external legal providers as well as ratify some of those points with the department to make sure that there were in fact no um, no evidence in in our current meeting suite of documents that that pertain to um, being council being acting unlawful or, or ultra vires as to the legislation. So there's a number of points in that that relate to uh, the use of um, uh, the word adversely under um, section two five four J three um, um, instead of um, um, you know relating to to the what was contained in the normal wording. So, and there was conjecture around, or sort of some confusion around some other aspects. So, um, for completeness, um, the body work's been undertaken. Now, there's been a, um, a number of parties that have, that have provided commentaries in, in, uh, um, with, to, to, to council, including uh, legal providers, uh, the department also, we're waiting on sort of some stuff from the ombudsman, but. But for the for the purpose of this report, you know, it really deals with the the definition of budget and how officers were were putting forward for consideration for council to consider a matter enclosed. The body of work around the meeting structures, the meetings through documents that will be progressed um, in in due course, and that's hopefully that'll um, identify some um, further aspects as to, to your question. Now, do you have? Further uh, I guess you've. Uh, Sorry, councillor, you have further questions. Yes, I do. I guess you've answered in part uh, uh, my question, which was, you know, why are we doing this? Um, and you mentioned that the Ombudsman was involved. Um, I, I wonder if you could expand on that. Uh, is the Ombudsman asking us to review our documents or, or is the Department Sorry. asking us to review our documents or why, what precipitated this uh, action? Sorry, Councillor, I believe the GM has provided the clarity that there'll be a further report coming, which will detail all of that, but the matter today is specifically relating to consideration on budgets. If the GM wishes to reply, that's fine, but we, he's reiterated three times the clarity of the scope of what we're focused on today. Um, and th that was specifically around a particular matter that was raised around budgets. But GM, happy if you wish to provide further response. Oh, um, I'll say that that's correct, Mr. Mayor. And I guess I'll, I'll just you know close in the um, uh, providing that you know um, regardless of the the works that's currently undertaken, yeah, you know, there's certainly no indications. Um, otherwise, we would certainly um, have received uh, advice from the department to have immediate um, review of our um, meeting suite documents um, to the extent that. Um, um, yeah, you know, whilst the ombudsman may be undertaking the review, there's nothing out of the uh, ordinary. I guess it's just the interpretation or usage of council, but there's nothing um, that's been provided to us uh, from the high authorities to indicate that um, our policies or our procedures and our uh, meeting formats are, are contradictory to the legislation. But that'll certainly be provided in, in, in greater detail when that additional body of work comes forward to council. Yeah, I so think... Councillor, do you have a question? Yeah, my yes. question, question is, uh, wouldn't you be uh, uh, overstepping the uh, mark by presuming at this point in time before that other body of work so, comes towards us, wouldn't you be presuming uh, that you everything is okay with what we're doing? Presumptuous, if you like, Sorry, because, Councillor. because you've said... Councillor, I'm just going to call a point of order on that. That's an argumentative question, not seeking clarity to the matter before us today. So we're talking at clarity to the... Com the matter before us today was clarified about 
can this issue about can the term budget be used for current and future budgets, not just for future? That's the matter we're considering today. Your question, which should be, I, I would encourage that your question is is addressed when that full body of work is brought forward for understanding. Uh, that's fine, Mr Mayor, but it's in the report and um, it's there put on the public record and it's on page, it's on, it's, it's on page, uh, it's in item 10.6. 32. And it's on page 32 and it wasn't I who raised the matter, Mr Mayor. Sorry. The general manager introduced it and I was responding because you so, invited questions on this particular on clarity matter. on the matter which the GM had clarified pertained to budget but I've at latitude to ask additional questions but you're going off into an area of speculation asking the GM to speculate um, GM can just to close this out can you clarify from the correspondence currently received from the department which is what you referred to was was there anything identified there that said council was acting, had was illegal? No, Mr Mayor. Thank you. So, councillor, that's a clarification of what the GM originally said. We can't speculate on what other matters might come, as you rightly point out. That's why we'll have to wait for further confirmation of that from any other conversation from the Ombudsman. Okay, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, my, my next question is um, in, in relation to the advice received and the advice received um, has been deemed confidential uh, because it's been well discussed in our confidential briefings, uh, the advice received. Um, I would like to move a procedural motion right now. Um, and my motion is that the advice from the the executive, uh, the deputy director general of local government division, Natalie Wild, advice on this matter, which has been proceed uh, into the report, uh, be tabled to this meeting. Um, perhaps, councillor, before you move that, you might want to ask the question. Um, I understand, in terms of preparing for the meeting, that. Um, <coughs> GM or CEO, you might advise um, the process for seeking approval to release. Could you elaborate on what your steps have been? Yes, thank you, Mr. Yeah, given this is a third party document, um, I, I see no issue in, in, in trying to address that matter, but we would need to see consultation with the department in allowing the release, um, at which point in time, um, when, once we do get approval from that, then, then certainly the uh, just a question, well, on that particular issue. Did you get approval to precede the document in this report from Natalie Wilde, the director, or Rebecca McAnellum? Um, did you get a, an approval to precede this letter into the report? What we provided there is just paraphrase. It's not, you know, it, it certainly was just the intent to provide clarity on the matter. Um, similar with, um, yeah, when we get legal advice. Um, we provide a, a summary of the matter. We don't necessarily put the whole legal advice for um, um, for, for that purpose. But So, Councillor, you have a procedural motion. Do you still want to proceed with it? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Yes. Um, we have a procedural motion. I'll speak to it. Is that the wording? Yes, we, we better put a date and um, the letter received on the 4th of August 2021. Reference 13 slash 18 slash 001. Well, this is asking for it to be tabled today. Well, well, well that's the motion, that's the procedural motion that's before us, tabled to this meeting. I'm presuming that's today. Um, well, that's the motion. We can't argue that's his procedural motion. Um, you can speak to it, Councillor. No, I, I'm saying that, that the letter, not the advice, that the letter from the Deputy Director General of Local Government dated, we'll make that dated the 4th of August 2021, be tabled at this meeting. Uh, you wish to speak to your motion, Councillor? 
Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I've uh, looked at the, at the letter. Um, there is no disclaimers uh, on the letter whatsoever. Uh, I would have thought uh, if this was general advice to the council, there would be a disclaimer on this particular letter. The general manager has preceded uh, all the most of the well, I'd say all of the issues that were raised in that particular letter into this report, and I don't think that there's uh, any uh, problems with releasing this particular letter, as it's all the information has been taken and preceded into this report. But I'll be open to the decision of the meeting. The reason I want to table this report, Mr. Mayor, is it mentions my name. And it mentions that uh, that the director has briefed the uh, the relevant officers in the department about what I said at the council meeting or what I didn't say. And um, I made it quite clear uh, at the meeting that I'd re received advice from the department, and uh, I'd also received advice from the LGAQ. We we all heard it, and matter of fact, I said that in the meeting. And I don't believe that was correctly conveyed to Mrs. McAllen, who says that I am not aware. Sorry, Mr. Councillor. Councillor, you're, you're. I'm tracing the letter. I'm tracing. Sorry, what no, you said. Councillor, you're reading a specific section of the letter that would be inappropriate until we've resolved this matter. Well, she 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 indicates. You've spoken in support. She indicates that uh, she was not briefed correctly um, in relation to this particular matter, and I wish to table this document because it's not only that in the document, there is a whole lot of uh, uh, other advice to Council in relation to transparency and open decision making, which hasn't been included in this in this report. So and I think it's in the public Councilor, interest. Yes, yeah, I'm just notifying you on time. I, I'm, I'm saying that it's in the public interest that this letter be tabled uh, for full disclosure and transparency in relation to this matter. Um, anyone wishing to speak against the, the procedural motion, Councillor Enright? Mayor, may I ask a question? You can ask a question before we particularly make a in, speaking. in regard to uh, the requirements for a third party letter to be disclosed. Uh, what is the process that we need to follow as a council to ensure that uh, we're operating within the requirements of legislation? Um, I'll ask the GM if he's able to provide that, or do we need to adjourn for more clarity? Yeah, so we we can um, yeah. I, I guess it's just identifying the document and 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 redacting any potential contacts and other things like that. But certainly, um, prior advice from um, uh, from the department would indicate that that there's no real issue in releasing it. But it just needs um, a, a review by governance to make sure certain um, particles of the um, document are uh, redacted accordingly. But I guess. Um, yeah, we're forgetting the, the the fact around the purpose of the report today, um, and that the there is an additional body of work that Councillor Swamba referred to around meeting transparency, which is in in reference to taking matters into close that's currently being um, reviewed, um, and and that body of work is being provided. It's there's no um, there's no nothing addressed in this particular report on those comments, is which is why I've sort of made reference to. Um, to that particular matter, I, I certainly can provide um, the attached letter to the upcoming report for, for better clarity, so that it, it is because three quarters of that letter addresses those particular matters as part. Uh, there's one reference to the budget matter, which relates to this agenda item on hand. Um, Does that answer your question, Councillor? No, not quite. Um, can I ask the process to follow for the letter in its entirety? Um, to be released, what it was from a third party. What is the process that we need to follow? Thanks, thanks, Councillor. Um, anyway, I, I might um, provide that question to Council's Principal Specialist Governance and Assurance to provide letters of release when uh, relating to third party documents. Yeah, thank you, Oliver, and um, thank you, Council, for the, the question. What I can say is that there's a risk that until we assess the document, because we haven't come here today prepared to release it, um, there's a risk that in any document that um, you know is confidential or is or might contain privacy or private information or, or confidentiality um, um, material in it, um, that 
it needs to be assessed. So th there is no process other than, uh, as part of the decision making, we need to make sure that we manage that risk by having that, that document, whatever it is, properly assessed and any potential private or personal information or anything uh, uh, that's confidential is redacted or recommended to be redacted prior to that release. So that's, that's the reason why there's some caution around just wholeheartedly releasing something um, without that assessment taking place. Thank you for that clarification, Councillor Enright. Does that provide clarity to your question? Yes, it does. Now, um, do, um, do we have another question that we're looking for? Otherwise, I'm looking for a speaker, anyone speaking against. So, do you have a question? Yeah. Yes, I have a question. Sorry, Councillor McGuinness first. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mayor. I'd, given the advice that we've just had there, if that being the case, I would have thought it's pertinent to actually leave this lie on the table until we uh, get advice one way or another. I don't see any urgency in doing this. Uh, I know we've got a procedural motion on the table, but it's uh, given the advice we have, what is the great rush to be doing this today? With regards, you're talking in regards to the procedural motion? No, I'm talking about the... Uh, well, well, no, you can only be talking about, sorry, yeah. Councillor, you can only be talking about the procedural right. motion yeah. at the moment. You can talk further about the other in a minute, but we're talking about procedural motion. Sorry, I've just got to try and keep us in the proper process. Now, Councillor Swambra, did you have a further question? Uh, my question was uh, in, in relation to the advice received from the governance manager. Um, <laughs> When, uh, when a, a letter is received and it, and it refers to the name of a councillor, you know, what privacy rights do I have if this letter is not going to be released um, for privacy reasons? And my, it contains some personal information of mine. How is it that it can be therefore uh, released when People are telling me that I have to go through a process to release the balance of the of the information in the letter. Sorry, Sorry Mr. Uh, Mayor, just to, a so bit of... I'd rather we approach the, the GM, please. Um, thank you. Just for the context, um, and, and certainly provide it, it further clarity. But, but I guess, Council and, and the public listening, you would recall that at, when this matter first was um, tabled to Council back on the 25th of May, 2021, um, the matter related to um, the consideration to go into closed, you know, the matter wasn't actually spoken or, or discussed. It, it, it got bogged down into council considering um, to go into closed to discuss that particular matter, uh, at which point in time, and it, it, it's evident on the tape because we, we've relied on the, on, the, on the broadcast recordings to get the exact wording. Um, to make reference back to the department around the, the exact quotes and references um, that have emanated that discussion. So, you know, the question around how did, how did or where or how did this emanate, if you go back to the recording of that meeting, it's clear there in the recording as to the purpose. We did adjourn at, at one point in time to get legal advice, who, oh, sorry, to, to contact the department who were um, uncontactable at that point in time, in which case we then proceeded to contact our legal providers who had the same advice that they didn't uh, perceive any any impact. Um, the following correspondence, uh, the following discussion then emanated that, that, that in lieu of no advice from the department that the matter um, um, be deferred to another meeting until that clarity was received. And, and for the purpose of today's report, that clarity is provided. Now the department did include a, a number of other points of, on, of, of other, either, other um, topics into that same correspondence, and we've been transparent in, in including all that. Otherwise, yeah, in that particular, we could have just made reference to that one particular point in that correspondence that related to this budget. But we we outlined what was contained in that whole correspondence in in, in dot point to to provide the the, the 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 segue into that other body of work that's still continuing as well. So, so can I just pause there? Thank you for that clarification. I'm not sure that quite. I, I understand, Councillor Swambra's question was. Um, how is his privacy being protected in the current approach? Is my take of what was asked. Um, and it, is, it, is it a reasonable interpretation that by not releasing the document that is maintaining that privacy of those comments or those references until such time as 
that process can be considered to consider what can be released. Is that what I'm understanding from your response to try and help bridge the gap? Is that the document staying confidential protects that privacy of personal details? That, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. And certainly, um, post we can review it and then be able to assess as, as the uh, Prince of Professionals Governance and Assurance indicated before. So that, does that answer your question? Mr. Mayor, Council? I'll withdraw my, um, my procedural motion and I'll make another procedural motion that this matter lie on the table uh, until this further advice is received. Um, with the matter of clarification around the term regarding both Clarif Clarification of whether the document uh, can be released. Right, uh, yep, that's not interfering with the matter before us today. Right. When you say the matter, Council, you mean the matter of releasing the document? No, I mean this. Uh, I mean this agenda item. Mr. Mayor, also just for cl um, clarification, the terminology "lie on the table" um, relates to being able mm -hmm. to be addressed at some point in time in the meeting. Um, yeah, which is if, I, is, I, is I, that I, what was that the intent? Was coming oh, to that be point, deferred, let's say be deferred. You wish to speak to this procedural motion, Councillor? Uh, look, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I support this and I recommend uh, it proceed because if the letter is able to table it, I'm happy with the advice received because it puts it into a fuller context of what was trying to be achieved and and it, it, it's not cherry picking words or, or advice received, it gives the full picture. And I think that's what the meeting and the public deserve in these circumstances. You're wishing to speak against. Councillor Enright. Mayor, I do have concerns about this item being delayed one more time. Um, to me, the reason that it was deferred in May was that we were unsure that the relevant items, Capital Works update, uh, quarter three I think it was, um, that there was concern that we could not provide that information uh, because we were referring to a budget cycle that the interpretation may have been that it was only for future budgets. The advice that we've received is that that's not the case, it refers to all budgets. Um, we're talking about um, something that's really in our history. We've since done a budget review. Um, we've then since had a, a fourth quarter capital works update. We've been through the budget process, we're moving on and in looking at efficiencies for our council, uh, to have an item like this that's dragged on now for five months, which carries very little consequence to where we're at in the delivery of our capital works program, um, I think is irrelevant and I think we need to be focusing on what we are doing into the future and providing uh, updates that are relevant uh, to our council at this very moment, not trying to uh, um, not trying to just 
dissect a, a letter or a reference uh, into a um, myriad of ways that I don't know exactly what it may achieve. So I think we need to be moving on. Let's get on with business and worry about delivering services into our community, um, not worrying about some detail in the past. Thank you, Councillor. Um, anyone speaking for Councillor McGuinness? Yes, Mayor, as I indicated earlier, I uh, think this would be better laid on the table. I think it's uh, we can get a, surely a letter in and out within a week and we could have this at the next meeting. Deferred, sorry, uh, deferred till the next meeting. Um, yeah, I, in tra for transparency reasons, I think it's a good idea that the full, full contents of the letter are um, uh, presented to the meeting. And uh, I think it's uh, there are enough comments made that we sort of, you yeah, know, for whatever reason, whether we are secretive and so on, I think this is a good idea that it uh, it be there, and uh, and hopefully the department doesn't have any problem with it being released. Um, I'll just speak against based on that last comment, the assumption that the turnaround of correspondence from the department. Um, will happen in the next meeting, Councillor. This says a future meeting. Um, I'm concerned, based on my experience with the department, this could take quite some time, um, if uh, just because of their processes and their consideration of um, how they distribute letters. Um, they're very reticent about how those appear in public from past experience. And um, it's very important, certainly in terms of our operating cycle, to have the clarity about the consideration on this matter today, just on this matter about how, what we can consider around budgets um, and being able to consider current budgets as well as future budgets, having that clarification um, and the confidence about working with that um, is really important given where we're at in our review cycle and needing to move, we'll shortly be moving into the cycle of um, budget reviews once more. So I'm just conscious of that overlap. Um, that's why this particular item, I think, had a time sensitivity to move forward. And I'm concerned that the delay to potentially wait until the department gets around to replying leaves this question about, even though the, the data's there in public or each day showing that it is acceptable, what is acceptable around the consideration of budgets. Um, so holding this particular item over, um, is a bit of a um, furphy. Agree that we should try to get the letter released when we're considering the broader matters that it addresses, but I'm not sure it's helpful to solving this clarification around one simple point today. Anyone else speaking for? Okay. Councillor Tom? Yeah, I'll speak uh, for Mr Mayor. I think it's uh, open and transparent to get this released so that the full transcript's out there. Um, <clears throat> I don't see a problem with it uh, being deferred. We all know that uh, what the advice is, so I have no problem uh, waiting that little bit extra to get it uh, um, released, hopefully released from the uh, state. Anyone else wishing to speak against Councillor West? Thank you, Mayor. Look, I do find this a bit challenging, this one actually, because I totally agree we need to get um, we need to find out whether we can head, release this into the public arena, but we certainly do need to ask the, uh, the department. Um, I feel I don't have the letter in front of me today, so it's a, it's a little difficult. So just, and I understand that we have to just get on with the business of council, but I'm quite happy if the department say yes to releasing it, that we need we can deal with that. But right here today, I can't support the, um, the motion thing. Anyone else wishing to speak for the motion? Or Against, if not, uh, Councillor Swamra, do you wish to close your procedural motion? Uh, yes, Mr Mayor. Look, it's, it's always good for people to get the full story yeah, in relation to a decision, if it's been made. Certainly, decision. I, I have, as I said, I have uh, no problems necessarily with the, with the information that's come from the department, but it comes with a lot of uh, other supporting information and general advice for the council. And I think we should all uh, be able to uh, understand that advice and, and not just 
uh, cherry pick words that come out of that without a full understanding of its context. Um, thank you. Right, we put the procedural motion of those in favour. Um, those against? Uh, the motion is carried um, on a vote of 4 3. Sorry. Better do a division, Mr. Mayor. Um, division called by uh, Division 2. Um, division 1, 2, 5, and 6, 4. Um, Mayor, Division 3 and 4 against. Um, we move now to item 10.7. Um, GM, would you introduce this, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now, hopefully, uh, 10.7, this is another uh, clarification matter that ha has emanated uh, from a meeting held back in 9th of March 2021. And as the uh, report indicates, it was when Council uh, was considering a, um, a, a paper around the request from the Fassifern District Historical Society for uh, financial assistance. <coughs> uh, Again, from the uh, transcript of the report, as um, indicated, or from the transcript of that meeting, as indicated in the um, previous recommendation, there was enough, there was certainly some um, uh, rigorous discussion around the matter, <clears throat> and there were some points where um, clarity was being sought around the proposed actions by council in, in, in providing or in, in considering this matter, and certainly. Um, um, around the the way the matter was heading towards being how it was being dealt with <coughs> excuse me um, the report intends to provide um, that um, the department indicated that the upon listening to the uh, the meeting they had no uh, particular <coughs> particular issues with the resultant um, um, outcome of the matter um, they did indicate that um, um, you know it was chaired a, a, a appropriately in the way um, it, uh, it was certainly diffused in, in not considering a uh, reversal of the uh, recommendation that was originally put forward, but also um, you know curtailed some of the discussions around the potential advancement of funds to the organisation. Um, there were concerns both from the department and, and legal providers that this may constitute. Um, uh, loans, and, and in which case uh, that would have necess necessitated uh, further con considerations around um, conditions and, and avenues, and uh, between council and the, um, uh, the the party that was receiving the advance funds. Uh, again, the report provides the, the necessary background and clarity, and certainly uh, once again open the uh, to the. Floor to, for any further clarification. So, um, GM, before we open to questions in light of the prior discussion, um, is this another example where we need to consider the availability of that advice to provide clarity? Um, and um, that will go through, that will take some time, I, I understand, because again, it will need to be referred. Um, and um, I, I would ask the question if that were to, in clarification of this matter, I note the reference to legal advice and how would that normally be dealt with, just for clarification before we consider the matter at all. Um, that, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess when your know, initial consultation with the department indicate that, um, you know, first and foremost, uh, that they, they don't provide legal advice, and that council should always seek separate legal advice from uh, um, respected your, your legal providers, um, which is which is the basis of what we provided. Now, uh, I, I guess I'm open to seeking clarity whether. Um, Legal advice that legal advice needs to be provided in here, or um, in, 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 in reference to um, the ability to, to paraphrase and get the um, succinct um, understanding of that legal advice as, as captured in the report. Uh, but certainly open up to the council for. Um, 
So, councillors, do you wish to um, get clarification around this matter as it's tabled? Is the first question. Um, Councillor McGuinness. Uh, yes, Mayor, and I see your reasoning behind you for consistency. And have we, is, is it different though in that Councillor Swanborough was mentioned there in, in different parts? So uh, I've got no problem if it is deferred, this one too, but uh, I think it's often a little bit different on legal advice. Uh, yeah. Um, and whether, do we ask a question of them whether they want that? Uh, Ed, or is that usually, uh, yeah, is it maybe to the uh, GM to answer that? Certainly to the department, the same question could be asked. That, that, that's correct, um, in, in, in differentiating advice received from the department, legal advice. I'll certainly provide, um, I'll look over to our shoulder to, um, to John, um, Principal Special Government Assurance, to give us just that understanding around uh, disclosing uh, legal advice. Yeah, th thank you, Oliver. And um, can I just point out that legal advice that council receive is subject to legal professional privilege, and ordinarily um, that privilege is not waived by an organisation. Um, secondly, um, under the local government regulations, the, the state government re recognise the, the importance and the protection of, of um, legal advice to organisations you know, such as councils, and under 254J3 subsection E, um, it's specified in there that legal advice obtained by local government um, is one of the specific reasons why we would um, close and keep confidential a matter pertaining to that legal advice. So I would be, you know, it's it's generally something that's not done and there's those protections afforded because of the very nature and intimacy that's involved with you know, legal advice to the organisation. Thank you for that clarification to add to the dialogue. Councillors, do you have, if you wish to proceed with this matter, then um, can we, are there any points of clarification to what's laid out before us today? Councillor Swanborough. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, uh, in relation to this one, I actually spoke to uh, the, the uh, Mrs. Rebecca McAnallen uh, at the department. And once again, I learned that it's all about in how they're briefed as to how they respond. And uh, I also was concerned that uh, that uh, the way the briefing given to her was a, uh, a little bit different to what actually happened in the meeting. I mean, essentially, in this particular meeting, there was a brainstorming session going on, trying to think of, well, how can we help the Fats Fern Templin Museum Sorry. You know, get some funding? And, and uh, we couldn't determine that, but to, but to represent to the department that, you know, we were trying to break the law or we would have broken the law or all this sort of stuff and to make it Sorry, a, to get official order, advice. Point of order, Councillor. Yep. The extract in the report refer, refers specifically, it wasn't brainstorming, it refers specifically to the motions and actions of the meeting as extracted. So you're misrepresenting what there, that there talks about what was the processes that were dealt with on that day and finally, put right. So it wouldn't want to mislead this meeting. That content in the report talks specifically to the sequence of matters that were considered that day. Um, and further, um, I hear that you've been having a conversation with someone. If you can provide the advice of what the nature of that conversation was in writing, then it's reasonable to add it. You've asked that as the standard from advice from a departmental officer to be provided in writing. We're trying to, these, the officers have been trying to comply with that on the prior matter. And um, it's, it's concerning that we, you're requiring from um, myself on one occasion and certainly from officers that everything's a written advice, but you're introducing a verbal advice. I, th I believe you've set a proper standard that this should be based on written advice. So if you have that written advice, Mr. Mayor, she gave me no advice, Mr. Mayor. Well, you're you're introducing it as though you received advice. I said I had a discussion with her about this issue because um, what was reflected in the letter coming back and and even 
this whole rigmarole of going and getting legal advice and purporting that uh, councillors around this table were trying knowingly or whatever to break the law, I think was a was a misrepresentation. Mr. Mayor, sorry, that, that wasn't what was. Sorry, Councillor, that I believe again a point of order. Um, ask the GM what was put forward as the query versus making an allegation such as that. Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you didn't point the finger at me. So I wasn't, Councillor. Point. I was just pointing to the GM. I wasn't pointing fingers. Be, be fair. I had open hands for those not able to see. Please. Just respect. You've made a statement, GM, um, without again, again, we don't have the situation of being able to disclose the correspondence. But are you able to enlighten how this was tabled, and then we'll consider whether there's any further clarification needed. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess in defence of my credibility um, and the fact that this was back on 9th of March, to this, these discussions open uh, were discussed in open, and so the recording was there. Um, I wasn't required to transcript, but I, was, I, was, I just I merely pointed to the department the section in the recording as to where the discussions took place. So, you know, for me to, to write up and, and type up the whole lot, I just had to refer at that particular section. So, I, you know, me misinterpreting that's I, I guess I'm, I'm a bit uh, bemused at, at, at that. Um, also, the purpose of it, and I guess, um, again, uh, understanding that it did occur 9th of March, there was advice or direction from the council to seek clarity around, I know that the intent wasn't to go down that place, but um, for awareness and understanding, there was direction to seek advice should have should council have proceeded to go down that line that it was heading, what would be the ramifications of that, um, just to provide context, Mr. Mayor, and not, not to say that, you know, council were, were consorting to go down this line and... Mr Mayor, just a question to the GM well. Whereabouts in the recommendation did it say that we wanted to go down this particular track to get legal advice so that this wouldn't happen again? Yes. That was, that was a request. Can I speak? Yes, please. <coughs> Councillor McConnell, you wish to add clarity? Yeah, pretty sure that was me in the meeting that... Um... <coughs> Ask the GM to make sure that we get advice on whether this was legal and whether we can do it in the future uh, or cannot do it in the future. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was me, if I Correct. remember correctly. Thank, and, and, Councillor, that was as a, an information request. It wasn't as a motion. Correct. Correct. Uh, uh, thank you for that clarification, Councillor McConnell. Councillor Chalk. Yeah, I'm just wondering... Um, as uh, when we receive advice, um, to receive it in this manner without actually seeing the advice and the context behind it, it makes it really hard to um, make decisions. Um, I'm, I'm assuming because of our last previous motion we deferred, we might get that advice um, to see clarity of what we can and can't disclose to the letters and the correspondence. Um, if I form into a question, actually, yeah, I'm not sure how to form so, uh, so, think, so can I have have those letters? So, so can we lay this on? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, just, just, just to first off, to be clear on this matter, not dissimilar to the prior matter, I think I'm trying to assist Councillor Chalk's clarity here. There is a correspondence. So if I'm just, I'm just going to take a moment and try to paraphrase what I've understood the circumstance. There was a, a non-motion request for additional clarity to be considered at, the prior me at that meeting in March. Um, I, I was in support of that request because I was concerned this was an uncertain ground and had a number of implications that we needed to learn from. And that was the intent of seeking the clarity. The GM, as I understand from his comments, referred it to the department and referenced them to listen to the section of the tape. And they've provided advice based on that. They've also said they don't provide legal advice and that's, suggest, that's prompted council to get legal opinion. We've heard from the, the 
uh, manager governance, a principal specialist governance here, that we we should be circumspect about releasing legal opinion, on uh, and and therefore um, the question remains around. Um, again, this has been fairly transparent again today anyway about what the advice is, but um, if the desire is to hold over um, um, noting the advice until we can see if the department's part of that correspondence can be released, um, that would be consistent with the prior matter. Councillor McConnell? I think it's more that as councillors, we haven't seen it. We have. Yeah. Where is it? Uh, and I was just going to provide some clarity. And I guess, um, Councillor Chalk, I think this is the workshop that you may have been away. Um, but on the on the basis of the advice from the um, the government, these the, the correspondence was actually included as part of the workshop items, which are deemed confidential, so that it it it, it meets the requirements of not not being able to provide that. But I do believe on that particular workshop, you may, you may have been absent. Sorry. But they they are provided in the. 22nd October. Yeah. Um, did, did that help at all, Councillor Chair? Yeah, that did, that did help. I was wondering where all that information was. Um, I'm just wondering why a non-motion request has been brought back to an ordinary meeting for acknowledgement. Just, uh, I, I, I could answer that, Councillor. Um, this was... This is something that prompted a lot of public commentary and it was important to have the transparency about what was the proper process for council. And that's, however we deal with that, this was seen as an easy way because we were dealing with, a, we had a number of procedural matters that we're all trying to learn and work through and build the transparency and understanding around. This was seen as a suitable forum for that transparency, rightly or wrongly. Um, I, I supported the, um, the um, advice from the GM to bring that forward. So just a question on that. Does that, does that set some sort of precedent now that whenever there's a, a motion that's, that's lost, uh, that we need clarification on, especially in, on a legal sort of matter, um, that when we request legal clarification, it's gonna come back to an ordinary meeting? Uh, Councillor, um, I won't, I'm not going to, um, pursue that as a reasonable question. Um, the reality is the meeting determines the things that it needs advice on and when Councillor McConnell asked for further clarity on this and if at any time we're dealing with a matter and, and we get a request for further clarity, um, it's the role of the organisation to go and try to seek that clarity and then it's the matter of how do you bring it forward so that it's transparent as to why that forms a part of how we make decisions. Councillor McConnell? And I think that that's exactly right. If I remember correctly, I asked for it to come back to a meeting. So it was open and transparent so people can see, sorry, the residents can see that there was a reason why um, it was voted down to, to do that, uh, to, to um, supply that money. So uh, yeah, I, I think we've been open. So again, sorry. Stack clarity, it wasn't voted down, it was removed after receiving advice. Okay. So we didn't Yeah, we didn't do it. Vote. So and and it's just getting out there so that people understand that when we have these issues within council that it's open about why you know, why some of us went one way and some didn't. So yeah. So, so I think it's uh, important that when we have these contentious issues they do come back to an open council for noting. I, I yeah. I, Sorry, and just as a comment for completeness to Councillor Chalk's last comment, I thank you, Councillor McConnell, for that observation. Um, if you refer to page, um, just to reopen unfortunate event, um, page 34 of 49 in the agenda, Councillor, you'll see that the original recommendation did decline, so did vote down that providing of support. Um, and whilst we went through a couple of iterations of trying to find a path, um, that was the final resolution of council. Just uh, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, um, Councillor Swambra. Yeah, I, I think that uh, having listened to Councillor Chalk, I think it then is appropriate that we um, we defer this until we do get a full understanding of 
of the reasons for it, and that can be made transparent to the public. Um, sorry, just um, uh, GM, did you have a, a additional information that, to help it all there? No, so I, um, similar to the other discussions, I don't want to reiterate the same words. Certainly, um, it's the listening to the uh, voice of the of the council. So, um, councillors, in light of that, um, the 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 procedural motion will be um, to defer consideration of this, but specifically to allow for the seeking advice around the department's advice on the item, as opposed to the legal privileged. I believe was my summation of those conversations. So, so just for future, is this something that we'll set a standard so when we get well, this noting back, we'll well, ensure that... Well, well, let's wait and see yeah. what the department say, Council, before we... The, count, the department may well say, no, we don't want our letters tabled. Happy with that. Um, and so we shouldn't preempt what their response may be um, for that consideration. Um, so that's really, uh, and, and um, I think the extension of that is to a future meeting um, to, to allow um, clarification um, of the opportunity to um, table the, corris the relevant correspondence um, from the department in proper title when you get it to the minutes. Um, and that's point, that, that then lets us determine whether we have approval to release that or not. Okay, but I... I, I so that, that's your motion? That's, that's I, I'm proposing that as a procedural motion from the chair, just to allow us to move on today. Um, I don't need to speak any more support of it. I think it explains what we've just discussed. Anyone wishing to speak against? Anyone wishing to speak additionally? Those in favour? Uh, well, that's carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. All right, I, um, we moved to item 10.8 GM. And, and just before we move on, um, uh, thank you um, for your patience and trying to move through. And I understand we now leave you with the joyful task of trying to manage responses and clarity um, uh, in a timely manner with the department. And um, we um, give you our best wishes in that regard. Um, Thanks, Mr. Mayor. It um, should be fairly straightforward. It's all part of learning, I suppose, and, and certainly open to um, the, the feedback and commentary as to how we streamline, similar with um, with the approach to uh, uh, meetings with the documents, hopefully the, the same vigour of um, input is provided. So page 37, we're now moving to councillors. Okay, something more up my alley, Mr. Mayor. 10.8, uh, Council Monthly Financial Report for September. Where do we start? Okay, end of September signals 25% of the financial year elapsing. The blink of an eye. Um, as indicated in the report, uh, Mr. Mayor, the revenue is slightly is tracking slightly down, um, as as opposite to certainly the outcome from the uh, previous month, which saw a surplus in revenue of about fifty thousand. Um, what this is associated with is really just the um, uh, the, the rates uh, department process supplementary notices. Uh, supplementary notices are to do with change of ownerships and and, and things like that, and what they processed in the uh, month of September were the credits, which meant a reverse of the um, receivables. Now, what they'll do in October is um, they'll per they'll process the the debit side where it's gone from person A to person B. So it's just missing that that side of the ledger. So that'll that'll correct itself in the um, October report. Um, operating expenditure, um, you can see the details there in note four or page six or nine of the report. Some of the uh, the, the the variances associated with that. I will pay um, homage to uh, rates and just highlight the um, the what has uh, has come as a result of the uh, COVID nineteen stimulus uh, stimulus three package. Um, so at the end of the um, extended uh, 
rates discount period, of, which was 17th of September 2021, it saw that a total of 87.56%, or about 16,724 out of the 19,101 rateable properties available of the 5% discount. Now, you can see in the uh, uh, financial report that slightly over t above what we uh, originally budgeted for. And this is on the basis that when we had, when council adopted the budget, there were no contemplation or considerations for the uh, the, th the third tranche of stimulus. Um, but it equated to about nine hundred and fifty four thousand dollars in total discount being availed for the um, for that period. Uh, compared to last financial year, where council did have in place uh, the, the two tier mechanism for discount, we had the five percent and three percent. Um, Roughly around the same figures, there was about 88.26% last year available of the discount for a total of 926%. But that um, extension of the 5% resulted in an additional $26,000 in, in, in discount being um, being realised for those that, that paid within the um, you know, that prompt payment period. Um, Preempting some queries, there's an amount there showing in other current liabilities of uh, 1.638 million. Uh, that really relates to the, again, the emergency services levied uh, as part of the uh, first half rates levy that will shortly be remitted to the Queensland government following the wrap up of the um, period one discount. Um, there's $828,000 in other financial assets. Uh, this relates to the um, final dividend payment from urban utilities as part of council's um, um, in, involvement with the uh, you know, with, with the water and sewage investment with urban utilities, that should have been um, uh, receded against receivables um, that will be corrected in um, in October. Um, the other point of interest around there is the um, uh, local spend. You'll you'll see the reports there showing slightly behind. Um, there's a number of key factors around that. There's been a number of um, significant purchases. Uh, relating to um, non uh, purchases uh, through non scenic room related businesses that have certainly skewed um, the, the the metrics a little bit. But when the as the as we track further in the financial year, that should um, normalise out, and hopefully we'll we'll, we'll trend back up towards the um, thirty to thirty five percent when it comes to local spend. Through the key highlights is there. Um, open the uh, floor, open to the floor for further clarification. Uh, councillors, uh, questions? Um, Councillor McGuinness? Uh, yes, Mayor, if I could just ask all of you touched on the 88.6%, I think it was from the, the rate, understood from rates paid on time. Yep. You didn't give a figure for last year. You said it was very similar. Uh, and is that consistent with even the year before? I'm trying to remember what it was like. Is So it's, where does that sit over a three-year period is the question, really? Yeah, that's that, that's a good question, um, Councillor McGuinness. And I guess we've, we've always um, yeah, continued to monitor um, the impacts of COVID. Um, and in particular, the, the, the previous year or the third year before was sort of, you know, that non-COVID impacted area. Um, the figure for July 2020 levy um, equated to about 88.26, and that was with that the two-tier, two-tier, um, that's 5% and 3%. But obviously with, with this year's one, again, it was just under the 88%, 87.56%. It just meant it was a 5% extended for that additional month. Um, so dollar wise, you know, that, that there was a further impulse on council about 26,000, that, that equated to about 26,000. So compared to 926,000 in July being afford, you know, being realised in discounts, this year was 952,000. Helpful, Councillor? Yeah. No idea off the top of your head what uh, the pre-COVID was like? Um, it's it's around the same figures, and yep. I've continued yep, to um, to make that. Out, I'm not yeah, I've, yeah, yeah, I've made to continue that, that comment that as we track and you know we've we've seen to be resilient yeah. as a community, um, but but certainly um, that that shouldn't negate the the considerations about providing these types of initiatives. And I'm um, you know mindful of the the commentary that we we have received where those snap lockdowns have 
um, hindered certain businesses' cash flows, and, and this has um, you know provided that that a bit of surety and assistance to those businesses in the region. Thank you, Councillor Enright. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, probably preface my question again, saying another solid report for uh, this month and for the first quarter. Um, just got a couple of questions regarding, firstly, the fees and charges and acknowledge this is predominantly a, a user pay fee for service. And I note the consistent increase of development, building, plumbing and refuse tipping fees. Is and My question is, is this a seasonal spike in these items or is a, a more consistent uh, continual growth? Thanks, Councillor. And before I um, hand that to um, Acting General Manager Randall Deans, I'll, I'll, I will preface that by saying that you know we've, we spoke about the annual report 2020-21 on the back of um, increased activities and, and the resilience of the regions when it comes to those. So I guess you know to answer one point of your question, there's a, there is a continuing um, factor associated. Hopefully, um, you know even with the um, property searches and change of ownership that, that continues to show the, the confidence or, or at least people wanting to be part of the region. Um, I'll transfer now to, to Randall just to give a, a, an insight into those activities. Yeah, thank, thanks for the question, Councillor Enright. Yes, with the planning, the building and plumbing fees, um, that activity has been constant. It was constant last year and increased and we're showing those increased trends again this year. And we'll probably bring that up statistical report probably in November, which will indicate that. But yeah, the trends are continuing and it hasn't been affected by the COVID. And I think that's because the construction industry, it wasn't closed down at any time with any of the shutdowns. Thank you. Further. Thank you. Yes, a um, couple more. Uh, I note the, um, the food licences being down. Is this related to the economic stimulus package offer? Um, just in the second part of the question there, the, the stimulus offer, the current, you'd recall that the tranche three of the, um, the, the COVID-19 stimulus provided for a discount of 25% um, on the, um, on, on the uh, food licences. Um, when it comes to timing wise, I'll, I'll hand over to Randall to give an insight of the processing. Yeah, based on the stimulus package, the, the timing of when we put those license fees out to the community was put on hold so that's where it's reflected in that wasn't reflected in the phasing of the budget um, that amount of money you would have usually come in at this stage but um, those fees and applications only just gone out probably in the last three weeks so we won't see that money coming in probably for another um, two to three weeks time you will see in the receivables, uh, once those notices are raised, they, they do show up as a receivable on the balance sheet. Okay, thank you. Further thank questions? You. Yes. Last one. Councillor Enright. Uh, page um, six of nine or page 45 of the report, the waste collection contract. Uh, the actual year to date figure is down considerably. Um, is there a reason for this one? Yeah, that's a that's a fairly um, stri um, straightforward one, but, but I will also transfer it to, um, to to Chris Gray. But but on when analysing that transaction, it, it does relate to given that the um, this is the, the the first year of the new contract being issued. Um, there there are some uh, verification and clarification matters required as to the the billing so, uh, the billing uh, bill of quantities against the contract, um, and also I'm led to believe there's been a uh, delay in the um, contractor providing their um, issuing their invoices to council for for payment um, that should be corrected uh, in, in in the near distant uh, periods yes oliver thank you for passing to me um what you've said is correct so that sh you should see that balance out over the next um, reporting period thank you That's all. further questions councillors uh, if not um Introduce the recommendation, please, GM. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The recommendation for item 10.8 today is that Council endorse the monthly financial report for September 2021. Seek a mover. Councillor Chalk. Any further questions? Any 
further discussion? A second, seconder, Councillor McConnell, wish to speak. Councillor Chalk. No, thank you, Mayor. Anyone seeking a leave to speak against? Anyone uh, seeking leave to speak additionally? No, we put the motion. Those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. Um, CEO, before we discuss moving to confidential, I believe um, you wish to advise the meeting regarding item 11.1. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, with the absence of the General Manager, People and Strategy, I'd uh, like to uh, defer this item for Council's next meeting. Thank you for that advice. Uh, Mrs Mayor, if I could also, um, given the outcome today of item 10.6, 11.2 would also need to be withdrawn. Okay. Um, deferred. To De defer to a later date. Defer to a later date, um, and that would be consequential to item 10.6. That's correct, Ms. Mayor, uh, pertaining to the budget. Thank you. Okay, councillors, we have one item therefore to move into confidential for, and that is um, item 11.3. Relating to Urban Utilities Board reappointment, it's closed under section 254J3G. Um, and I seek a, a motion to move into closed session. Councillor McGuinness, seek a seconder. Councillor McConnell, uh, I don't believe we need, unless there's anyone vigorous in your discussion on that. Um, those in favour? That is carried unanimously. To those in the gallery, um, thank you for your participation. I'm mindful of the time and um, we will resume in open session at um, one o'clock, um, which should allow us time to deal with this matter and um, um, have a a brief lunch adjournment and return to close out this last agenda item. Um, thank you, and um, if you, uh, we'll hear you back at one o'clock. Thank you. Um, Councillors, we, we are due to reconvene. Could someone just see where our two wayward councillors are? Just um, welcome back to the digital gallery. Um, we are about to move to return into open. Um, thank you, councillors. Um, thank you, CEO and team. Um, welcome back to the digital gallery. I seek a motion to return to uh, open session. Um, Councillor Enright, seconder. Councillor West. Um, those in favour? Thank you, councillors. Now back in open session. Firstly, just for a clarification, CEO, I just refer to you for a moment. Yeah, thank you, Mayor and councillors. Uh, prior to going into confidential, we deferred items 11.1 and 11.2. Uh, we should have uh, had these actually withdrawn. So just correcting the record in terms of those items being withdrawn, not deferred. Thank you. Thank you, CEO. Um, now, councillors, we have one item, which um, item 11.3, um, and um, I will ask um, the GM to introduce the recommendation for this item uh, for the meeting, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The recommendation for item 11.3 is in uh, five parts. Um, the recommendation is that one, council note the retirement of board member Kathy Hirschfield, effective 31st December 2021, with the board to appoint Directors Australia to conduct an independent recruitment process to recruit a new board member for a three and a half year term commencing 1 January 2022. Two, Council endorse the reappointment of Graham Thompson 
as a board member of Urban Utilities for a further term of three years, effective 1 July 2022. Three, Council endorse the reappointment of Philip Strand and Mark Gray for a further term of four years, effective from 1 July 2022. Four, Council delegate to the Chief Executive Officer the authority to sign the instrument of appointment that formalises the endorsement of candidates to the Urban Utilities Board. And five, in accordance with Clause 22.6.3 of Council Standing Orders Procedure CM03.01 PR.01, Council maintain confidentiality over the content of this report and the attachments and allow urban utilities to determine the necessary releases in relation to the board appointments. Thank you. Thank you, GM. I seek a mover. Councillor Swambra. Um, any, any need for any points of clarification, councillors? Not a seek a seconder. Councillor McConnell um, wishing to speak. Anyone um, seeking leave to speak against? Anyone seeking leave to speak additionally? We put the motion, those in favour. That's carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors. That brings us to the close of the items for consideration for today's ordinary meeting. Um, and therefore I thank those in the digital gallery for your patience and uh, joining us for the morning and um, I bid you good afternoon and I therefore declare the meeting closed, councillors.